Welcome in everybody to the 2023 Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee round three tournament race, a spot in the semifinals on the line with this upper bracket matchup. Welcome in everybody. I'm T-Pat. I'm joined along by Leggy Starscream as well as Chrysosaurus for this round three matchup, guys. Hey, how's it going? And what are you looking forward to in this truly all-star matchup? Hey. So, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to repping Dynam, our single Pika player tonight. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, our number one pot racer will take home the crown as was determined in the pick order from last week. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, as someone who will try to remain impartial, despite the fact I have run Pika, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to see a really, really close tournament, but a really, really close round between the three of for the three of them. This is probably going to be one of the most uh, closest races we'll probably see this entire tournament. As from what I believe, last round there were only like a couple of seconds off each other if you just take their time. So this will be really, really uh, interesting to see. Yeah, on paper, it looks like this could be our closest rate race of the entire tournament. But even the eyeball test, it looks like this could be the closest race. Because all three of these runners last round in round two did get 305s of varying strengths, with Dynam having the fastest of those 305s, barely beating out Etiquette, which is why their current rank is third and fourth and ended up in pot one, pot two, respectively. Headstrong was the top of the wild card positionings so she is in uh pot three but this is going to be an excellent matchup you'd never think that the two former world record holders would be the underdog in this match so who's really the underdog here right <laughs> honestly you know if i were to wake up tomorrow and you told me this race went down in any order I would 100% believe you. I yeah. do not think we can put much stock actually in the order that these runners have been entered here. Every single one of them, you know, has a shot at, you know, competing with Etchy's uh, round one world record. <laughs> yeah, Etchy so far the only one to be sub three in this tournament, a 259 in round one. Funny enough, his round one time was the fastest by about three minutes. And then in round two, it was New Amber who had the fastest time with a 301. Her time was also about three minutes ahead of the competition. Uh, we had one race earlier today. Etchy did win that one with a high 303. I don't think that's going to win by three minutes. So you never know. Though pot seating doesn't matter heading into round four upper because only three people advance. It is the uh, the upper bracket finals or the true semifinals, uh, whichever way you'd like to uh, hear that out. But yeah, with Etchy already advancing, there is one Pika player already in. Could Dynam make it two for two or could Etiquette or Headstrong even it at one Pika, one Eevee player a piece. We're going to find out in a couple seconds here. Yes, yeah. as we just said, the run just started, so... As you can see, there's two, diff there's two different versions in the front. You have either Pikachu or Eevee, and depending on which version of the game that you play, you're either going to be having your starter as a Pikachu or your starter as an Eevee, and it has a lot of uh, differences between the two. But of course, right now, the first thing that's very important for both player for all of our players to do is to mash A and name yourself uh, one, I suppose. <laughs> you do a single character, or you could take a crisis. Obviously, you and I, PLA players. If you've got the little numpad, like the wireless numpad, uh, you could just pick any number, and you're not even losing any characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Part, I had, don't have a numpad. I don't have a, the numpad anymore. But even then, in Arceus, you name before uh, you name before uh, even the title screen. So that doesn't so that doesn't matter. You can name yourself whatever you want. Yeah, the important part is just mashing through this, you know, classic opening dialogue from Oak as fast as you can. Uh, we'll see our runners the moment they actually gain control, hopping into their options menu, setting a few standard options if you're familiar with any sort of Pokemon speedrunning, uh, going to set mode, turning tech speed up, and 
a setting that was introduced in more recent generations to skip pre-rendered cutscenes. Man, I wish that actually sometimes worked in Scarlet and Violet. That would be great. It's like, yeah, you have it on, oh, but no. it's like it skips like only half of the movies, not the other half. Uh, just to F just to FYI for the people in chat, etiquette stream is a little bit choppy on our end. We are trying Tag is trying to resolve that as a uh, soon as uh, possible, and it might be the fact that etiquette might be a bit behind on the feed. So do keep that in mind when you're watching uh, the race. Oh, oh wait, oh hold on. Oh no, the stream the stream's buffering on my end. Hold on. Uh, yeah, we seem to be having uh, some small amount of technical issues, but, you know, we will keep things going. Um, the most important thing here, while we get the tech back up, is our players are going to be introduced to the catching tutorial, uh, similarly to Let's Go, the mobile app. Uh, sorry, Pokemon Go, the mobile app. This is Let's Go. Hi, I'm here. Uh... <laughs> You use motion controls to simulate the sort of swiping motion you would do on a phone. Um, so our runners are going to be using motion controls to catch their starter as a tutorial segment. Uh, optimally, you mash through all the tutorial text as quickly as possible, and you throw the ball in time to get a great catch. I have never successfully done a great catch, but let's see. How many greats today? So one great from Headstrong... One nice from Etiquette and Whoa. a excellent from Dynam. Yeah, I've never seen a nice throw uh, on this catch tutorial because the the circle's moving as you're mashing through the text. So that's either really impressive for Etiquette or he somehow duped us by waiting a cycle. <laughs> <laughs> um, importantly uh, for Dynam, that was a 27 CP Pikachu. Yeah, so the, the effect of the 27 CP for Pikachu specifically is that uh, 27 CP guarantees that Dynam's Pikachu is neutral nature because all other natures will end up being 26 CP on that cutscene. Uh, so he already gets the comfort of knowing that his Pikachu is runnable. He doesn't have to bother about having uh, minus attack or minus special attack or plus speed, perhaps. Uh, which is kind of useless for the Pika version. But Eevee doesn't get that benefit because CP is calculated by just mashing all of your stats together and like multiplying them by a little bit. Um, there's just a, it's a pretty simple formula. But uh, HP is like weighted the most heavily because it is the highest stat. Uh, and since Eevee's HP stats a little bit higher, uh, it tends to get the 27 CP more often and you can't really tell. So we might see some of the players check. We got Adamant on Headstrong screen and Impish on Etiquette screen. Okay, they're going to run them both. They're both minus special attack. Um, it's kind of in that realm of you might want to run minus special attack. You might opt to choose that backup save just to have a neutral nature. Uh, really, minus attack is like the most damning in terms of how much time you would lose because minus attack really hurts in the early game. Special attack comes into play in the mid game, but you might have high EXP to be able to counteract that. So all three runners opting to run the starter that they were given and not use their backup saves. And of course, all three of these runners are very, very well practiced with all sorts of starters. Um, in fact, I think a lot of the strats were for running suboptimal starters were developed uh, as part of this tournament because normally in a you know, PB attempt, you would just reset if you see minus attacks. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. minus attack uh, has uh, a special place in at least in my uh, area of Pokemon that I hate. It's actually right next to uh, Arvin's Greedent, and uh, <laughs> it should uh, never, it, you should never run it, even even in a race. I have run minus attack. Uh, Giovanni, uh, Giovanni 1 is a pain. Is it, yeah, it's 1. Oh, I believe attack. it. Yeah. Yeah, so the, a lot of there's been a lot of friendly races and a lot of practice races kind of in between these tournament races. And I haven't known and most anyone to use their backup save. So it's just kind of like, ah, oh, just kind of run what you get. But it, obviously it, it being in like a more friendly and casual setting that we often get minus attack or minus special attack. And in, in that, you kind of learn 
why it's bad. You know, you learn what are your weak points of the run. And yeah, minus attack, especially on the EV side, uh, that Giovanni fight can be painful or, or almost even dangerous. But you tend to just lose a lot of times to needing an extra turn, especially on the early game Brock fights. Oh, well, Pika's um, worse. Pika's yeah. worse. You just you and you Pika's don't really care. Right on your dead. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, rival uh, rival one. Uh, the entire strat of this uh, fight is uh, spam A, win games. There's literally nothing else. Pikachu will just thunder shock uh, for the. Uh, three to four times. Only three of you have plus special attack, which we know we, uh, Dynam doesn't. And as for Eevee, you just uh, tackle uh, two to three times and uh, it's over. Hopefully you don't see Pikachu do use Growl because that's annoying. And hopefully you also don't get paralyzed and just lose like 10 turns. But aside from that, everyone's having like at least a decent fight with uh, Rival 1. Yeah, we're yep. pretty decent there. I would. It, it is kind of nice to know that Rival does attack turn one and doesn't growl turn one because that can make the fight extremely annoying anybody that's ever run a gen 4 game like platinum or diamond pearl where your like rival one fight could just growl spam from the beginning and it turns into like a 12 turn fight yeah at least rival gets it gives us a chance to not have lowered attack on turn one yeah no nope. no one pets that pokemon in the beginning sag it is interesting because you can lose the rival one fight and it is one of the few fights that you're allowed to lose and the game does progress. It's more common to lose uh, playing the Pika side uh, because if you get crit by the Eevee, which is um, using tackle, uh, it is more likely to kill. On the Eevee side, it's less likely. However, the Thundershock could paralyze and if you get fully paralyzed enough times, it is possible to lose. Funny enough, uh, just yesterday I lost my first ever rival one on the EV side, like ever, uh, and I was just like, "Oh wow, this has never happened before." But it was also like a 12 turn fight, so it is a little bit painful, even even if losing saves some text time. Yeah, whereas you know, in my practice for mm. my Pika running, um, I died way too many times more than I care to admit. Uh, looks like Dynam got a plus special defense AV. Yeah, plus uh, special defense AV. That's what uh, he got. Yeah, do either of you want to explain what AVs are? Because I haven't heard of them in any other Pokemon game. Uh, yeah, T-Pat, please take it away. I, yes, I, I'm, I, not ex I'm not doing. I'm not. I'm not knowledgeable enough. Yeah. So in all the other mainline Pokemon games, you know about effort values. Uh, but this effort values go away. Uh, AVs, or um, awakening values, or go Ooh. power as they're known. Um, basically, it's just every level up, you'll get a randomly assigned plus one to any given stat, or at least semi-randomly. Uh, it does add up a lot faster than what EVs could. Uh, so the AVs are very powerful. Um, there is an influencing factor. Uh, for example, if you have, um, in fact, Adamant's a good uh, example here. Adamant being a plus attack nature gets an extra chance to be an attack AV, but it actually removes the chance of the special attack AV or the lowered stat. That can be overridden by the characteristic of each Pokemon. The characteristic also awards two extra rolls. So there's eight total rolls for each AV. And if you have a, say, plus attack with the attack characteristic, that would guarantee four out of those eight rolls could be an attack. But it is still uh, random. So it can influence the way those AVs are laid out, but it is never guaranteed. Just want to interrupt. Just want to say real quick, Dynam did actually go for early bug. Uh, just for F FYI, and you can actually catch a bug before you enter Viridian Forest. It's not going to be its highest level possible. However, outside of Viridian Forest, uh, the catch rate of all the Pokemon there is actually slightly higher than the Pokemon in Viridian Forest. My guess is that uh, the game really want to be like nice in the beginning so that you can catch more Pokemon. And so the catch rate is, uh, incre is uh, increased. And so while Dynam is technically behind everyone else, he is one Pokemon ahead. It was a misfortune because he tried throwing the ball uh, quickly and uh, the Weedle did attack, so uh, yeah, we're not... So it is, he didn't get first ball, but you know, it's going to be fine. Um, yeah, when you're going for early bug, the experience is less important because it is all, all the experience bonuses in this game are around catching at least are very multiplicative. 
Um, so missing the first ball there isn't uh, critical Ooh. outside of the time loss. All right, Ed Strong going for Pikachu. She didn't get, uh, she didn't get like a good throw on Pikachu. Um, Pikachu like Pikachu just jump. Uh, Edda also finds a Pikachu chooses to catch it a little bit later. Makes sense. You want the bugs to get as much EXP as you can early. So he's going to delay. Uh, Dynam finally going to get the lure. So for those who don't know what lures do, uh, not only do they increase the spawn rate of Pokemon, at least I believe they do, uh, they also make every Pokemon spawn at the highest level plus one. Nice, n nice, nice Butterfree, Dynam. Nice Butterfree, yes. Yeah, it's actually a great example to see that um, Dynam caught the early Weedle, and because the catch rate is uh, increased before you enter Viridian Forest, it's you YOLO throw, and even if you don't hit the circle, I believe it's 90, 93% or so. Whereas in the forest, uh, even using a berry, it's only about 85%, so you're kind of giving yourself a better catch rate um, at the cost of a bit of that experience. Uh, and yeah, I thought what Etiquette did, which was see the Pikachu, but get the lure first, uh, I thought was a pretty smart decision to get that EXP on the bugs uh, and also prevent a uh, depositing menu. Because usually depositing is kind of slow. It's a, it's a little bit of a slower menu. So depositing one thing can cost like eight seconds. And if you can avoid doing that or at least make it as efficient as possible, it can certainly uh, save you like minutes over the course of the run if done really well yeah and at this point what our runners are looking for is the ev runners really need to hit level 10 before they go into the brock fight so that ev has double kick uh dynam is looking for an oddish to use for the brock fight uh i assume based on the fact that he's fighting this but bug catcher that he'll be going for the Route 2 Oddish, which will spawn at level 9 when lured. Yeah. But yeah, we'll two levels higher than the forest. Let's see, he's doing the uh, Route 4 Roulette. Let's see if he gets the Oddish first try. He does not. He does not. So he's going to have yeah, to do this a couple of times until he gets the Oddish. It, there is a risk of getting like the Oddish because the Oddish in Viridian Forest is level... Oh, he doesn't get it again. Uh, the Oddish in... Viridian Forest is only level 7, and to guarantee the uh, Onyx KO... Ooh, nice blowing Oddish. Uh, he need Level 10 is guaranteed to KO Absorb with... Um, yeah, it's guaranteed to KO level 10. Level 9, it can KO, but you need to have high special attack, and for the most part, if you catch this one, you have no idea what your special attack is, so you're going to have to either just take the risk or try catch something outside here. I like mm -hmm. to see a lot of runners uh, after catching even a Route 2 Oddish, if they have a Pidgey or a Rattata on screen, they'll also just go for it. Early Rattata is actually starting to become a lot more common uh, for both runners because Raticate is actually a great source of experience in the run, especially in the mid game. So catching the Rattata now uh, to get a little extra EXP on that Oddish can be really beneficial because you just need that one level to hit 10. Yeah. Yeah. I had strong also going for the Route 4 roulette, trying to find a bell. Oh, wait. Did she, is she looking for a bell sprout? Um, uh, let me check I'm, her tracker real quick. I that believe looks so. Looks like she's got it marked off, but that she might got marked off. Yeah. Tough. So she was, she okay, went, she's she went and found the bell sprout, but unfortunately, um, <laughs> decided to run back and actually despawned it. But thankfully, there's another bell sprout that spawned as well. So that's all well and good. Yeah, all of our runners having a little bit of interesting luck here coming out of the forest and on their way to Pewter City. Interesting yeah, no to one's all having good Route 4 roulette luck. Yeah, by the uh, way, it is, it, is, it is Route 2 upper. Sorry, my I am... You know I don't play counter, right? I'm, yeah. I'm bad. Oh, yeah, you're all good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the, what's the PLA equivalent to the Kanto region? Uh... I have no idea, actually. Uh, yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> Legends Mewtwo. Yeah, someone well, look up... Guy, guy can only up, dream. Like, someone look up, like, what the feudal region of Japan was back then. Oh, that's uh, something a little, something a little interesting. Uh, the Weedle and Caterpie in Headstrong. I think she caught a a, uh, a supersized uh, uh, Bellsprout. So, that, so who wants to explain supersized Pokemon? Yeah! Oh, yeah, I got, or, oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it away. Uh, super, right. So 
when you say when you see a glowing Pokemon, so it has a, that red or that blue aura around it, it represents that the Pokemon is either large or small. It doesn't technically appear that way in the overworld as it does in some other games, but it's just the way to indicate that this is a large or small Pokemon. It does come with an extra multiplier. They tend to get 1.5 times multipliers to their experience when you catch them. However, there's a hidden 10% chance that the Pokemon is either very large or very small. And instead of 1.5, it's boosted to a four times multiplier and it makes a big difference throughout the run. So a uh, supersized Bellsprout would, on Route 2, I believe is worth almost 900 EXP, which is good for at least two levels, if not more on uh, plenty of your Pokemon in your party. So that's why we actually saw the Weedle jump all the way to level 11 and then evolve, and now it has to get another level to evolve into Beedrill. Yeah, it's worth noting that, you know, uh, to get that full experience point uh, benefit from a supersized Pokemon, you there are a number of other uh, multipliers that get factored into that. For instance, the technique for using the motion controls, there's the synchronized catch you see when both Pokeballs from the one and two player sync up correctly. There's hitting an excellent throw, which is determined by the size of the circle when you throw the ball inside the colored circle. And don't forget first ball bonus as well. And of course, the sleeper one that no one talks about, uh, the fact that it is a first time catch of that Pokemon. Yeah, that's right, because it appears on every single catch we get. Yeah, so we don't even bother thinking about it. <laughs> but um, it's, it's all multiplicative. So if you get all of those bonuses together, including the super large or the super size, uh, you can get as much as a 26.4 times multiplier to the experience. And that's why catch experience matters in this game. It is worth so much more than fight experience. Yeah. Yeah, as it, you uh, it is said all wild. that. Uh, Dynam just uh, beat Brock. In Pikachu version, Brock is actually uh, one of the uh, easiest fights in the game. You lead Onish, you press Absorb, you win the game. That is uh, pretty simple. And Eevee, it's a little bit more uh, complex, as you will, will see in uh, Etiquette Street. Etiquette, mainly because uh, Vine Whip is not exactly a great move, because it's a physical grass move versus a special grass move, and... Uh, it's just not it's just not great so we're gonna see etiquette gonna use for the, for the first one just double kick you're gonna just double kick twice and then for the onyx we're going to see but uh, a tail whip into a double kick so that we can try and take it down as quick as possible so it is one of the disadvantages of uh running eevee at least in the early game especially in box gym where in uh pikachu you just do it in two turns eevee you need like five turns i have to count yeah yep, uh, you typically need five i'm yeah. not quite sure but maybe headstrong could possibly skip a tail whip on onyx because of being adamant but yeah so yeah. the uh so the theory there is that if you hit level 13 you get that level boost that allows you to do enough damage to skip the which tail. she does so i yeah, think she if you're level 13 it's automatic uh if you're level 12 or lower you need to have 32 attack uh, and then you are at that high enough threshold, even at level 12, to also achieve the same effect. So Headstrong's fight is going to be a turn faster because she's not going to have to use Tail Whip on this Onyx. You're going to notice that each kick is going to do almost exactly a quarter damage. Nice. Calculated. Yeah, looking at the various catch counts between the runners, um, we are seeing fairly standard uh, catch counts between the lot of them, um, which does go a lot to explain a lot of the uh, gaps in... Uh, in their pace. Like, yeah, their pace in the foot race. Um, obviously, a lot of the flux here in the early game is going to be due to uh, who's ahead of the catch count, who's seen more optional stuff versus less. Um, we really can't have a super solid read on who's going to win uh, until we're done catching Pokemon. But even then, you can still kind of, like, rule a thumb it. Yeah, there's, a, there's a good soft gauge for, like, um, you know, how quick or how slow somebody is going. So in this case, 
Headstrong had 10 Pokemon fighting Brock, which is actually incredibly high. That's like among the highest that you can possibly have. Um, but it's obviously the advantages are hitting level 13. You've saved a turn on Brock for catching that many Pokemon and getting that much experience already in the early game. Um, so even though she's the last to beat Brock, she was also the furthest ahead on her catch route. So it all balances out. Uh, I like I like to say you get to cash in on your catch count uh, when you get to about route 17. When you're really ahead, you only have to catch one thing instead of four things, and all of a sudden you have flown through the uh, late game. But the good yeah. rule of thumb is that those early, like a higher early game catch count, tends to be not only safer, uh, but more rewarding for the end game as well. Um, instead of having to just rely on the end game to make it through. It's the uh, the the old trope in this game is that gold splits are actually bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of like optional Pokemon, uh, in so one of the differences between uh, Pikachu and Eevee is actually the fact that there are version exclusive Pokemon and also version exclusive uh, uh, spec uh, well bonus spawns. Uh, in Eevee, you can both uh, Edstrong and Etiquette have caught themselves a Pikachu in Viridian Forest. Obviously, Pika doesn't catch Pika in v Viridian Forest because well, that's will, that will be redundant. Uh, all right, uh, yeah, all right, I know it. did get the Mankey before entering uh mount moon so that's a nice catch for for uh Di for dynam uh neither etiquette nor headstrong have encountered a uh, snack yet so we'll hope to see if they get either of them but now we're gonna get into one of the i'd say second most important catch area in the entire game although that's uh an argument to have and that is a uh, mount moon we're looking for specifically three things while we are going into a uh, mount moon uh, we are looking for a rock, we are looking for a pink thing, and we are looking for a mushroom. Well, d define pink thing, because a few of them can appear in Mount Ideally, Moon. you prefer small pink thing, although depending on the situation, you might have to go for big pink thing. All three. All three, all the time. So obviously, uh, pink, obviously it does, pink it, thing. It, sorry, I was just going to say, it does depend... Uh, on like situations like i believe like even if headstrong does see a chancy or a uh or, or a uh Corfable, because of her high level she might opt to skip it just for consistency sakes but it again it depends on like your stats on your your pokemon if you're like your minus attack you're really hoping for the big pink thing to to uh spawn yeah, yeah we didn't we didn't we didn't see it in uh, Viridian Forest, but most areas of the game have what's called a special spawn. We sometimes call them the rare spawns. Uh, but the special spawn is a 0.5% chance, and they're usually chances in most areas. And in Mount Moon, it's chancy. In Viridian Forest, it's actually Bulbasaur. That's the 0.5% chance. But because chancy is worth so much EXP, it is literally an experience sack. Seeing it can be a really good thing or a really bad thing. Uh, the earlier in the game that you see it, the more of a good thing it is, but you have to be a bit careful with your party situation. Because uh, one of the things with leveling up is that it all occurs quite literally one level at a time. So if you catch a Chansey with a full party, you are just going to sit in that level up screen for minutes. And that's not an exaggeration. It can be minutes. But if you are smart to empty your party to the things that you only need, uh, then it can be really beneficial to have all that high EXP during the early part of the game. So what you'll see a lot of players do is make an extra deposit menu. Uh, and in the case for, say, the Eevee players, they'll just drop everything except Eevee and Bellsprout. And then they'll catch Chansey to make sure that they are maximizing the experience and minimizing the total number of level ups. Yeah, but we have a number of runners making it down to the main catching room of Mount Moon. Uh, we see Etiquette and Dynam working on catching their parents. Uh, Geodudes have spawned. We, I don't think we've seen any pink things yet. We have um, not. We have not seen any pink things. And also, Hestron got her uh, Paris just actually a, a little earlier than going into the going into the room. Dyn Etiquette's gonna have to see. Both Etiquette and actually uh, Kakuna has to see an, ev an evolution real quick. So I will say the one thing we haven't mentioned is the fights are a little different. The early game fights here are a little bit different between the two versions. Uh, 
Dynam actually fought the youngster earlier because of like optimal menuing. You want to fight the young. You Sandshrew is a pain, no matter what version of the game you're running. But and so we want to use um so we use Oddish to deal with the Sandshrew early, whereas with EV it's actually better to just delay it. Uh, Headstrong not being that much, so it decides to opt to reset. The route actually opts to just or leave. Just, just leave. leave. Only a Paris, no Geodude whatsoever. Yeah, so one of the interesting things to note is because of the fight order that happens across the two different games, uh, Pikachu actually fights that last trainer that Headstrong's on, Gunster Drosh, uh, earlier because we want to use Oddish for it, uh, whereas uh, Eevee Runners can just use Eevee to take out the Sandshrew just fine. Um, because of that, Headstrong and Etiquette both used their lure earlier, Whereas Dynam waited almost until he went down the first ladder. I did you see that etiquette waited a long, long time to get that Clefairy to stop moving. Uh, Clefairy's worth the most experience of the three normal things, and it was also a glowing one, so that experience is a lot. I'm also laughing at how many Zubats there are in Dynam screen. Uh, so it's what can happen is that. To, to make sure that you get a first ball bonus, you might opt to wait to see a Pokemon physically do an attack animation, because then they're going to not do that attack uh, for at least a cycle. Um, the starters tend to be very quick about uh, when their iframes kind of run out on that. Um, mm -hmm. But in the case of this, like Etiquette was just like, I need to wait for you to attack. He had a couple opportunities um, to do a side throw, but just... I took, think... the took the time loss to guarantee the EXP. Yeah, yeah I think... Thing... Sorry, I was going to say that. I think the other thing is that because Etiquette... Because the Clefairy was the first uh, thing, you spawn, you had to change the Great Ball. And uh, for Clefairy, it's a bit annoying because Clefairy likes to jump around places if you don't like try and do like first cycle on Clefairy. So that is uh, another but downside. It is optimal to do Clefairy first, ideally, because you don't want Paris nor Geodude to get too much bonus exp but aside from aside from uh, it, it can be annoying to catch especially when we saw etiquette it just kept on jumping and jumping and jumping and decide uh no i don't want i don't want to do it it's kind of yeah. annoying that the uh, all the pokemon that you catch and i think it's literally all of the pokemon you can catch in mount moon uh with the lure they come at level 11 and they all learn a move at level 12. So if they gain one level, not only is it the two seconds for the level up, but it's another two seconds to cancel the move learning. Yeah, the big just... thing that our runners are looking for here is to hit uh, level 15 by the time they get out of the mountain and onto Cerulean City. Uh, both Etiquette and Headstrong are in a really good spot there. Dynam, who has yet to see any of the three pink things, is still floating around level 13 and yeah, there's he, i don't think dynam is actually gonna experience. hit get a uh, 50. uh he's only gonna hit, he's gonna hit 14 like after these next fights but i don't think he's gonna hit 15 when he leaves unless he like catches like another another pokemon so he might have to do i i want to say route four catches am i correct saying that for route after yeah, Mount yeah. it would it would be what uh route four but, oh, oh, there's a, there's oh, a big boy, Hold thing. on, there's, there's a big, there's a big thing, thing, thing right there. Oh. And Etika is going for it. And he, he, he just deposited his entire party. Um, so this is actually a really optimal catch. Um, it can be worth a lot of EXP, probably around six, 700. I think the lure ran out. Um, but the seven. lower, yeah, the lower the level, or technically the lower the CP a Pokemon is, the higher its catch rate. So it's I inversely is it proportional. Staying in? And it stays in it. first ball, so that's really nice for Etika getting that bonus EXP is going to be really helpful for in the beginning. That yeah, even a now level seven level Clefable worth worth six hundred and forty seven EXP. We do see Dynam Duke does catch the Zoop, just who to catch the Zoop by early, just to go and get more EXP. And unfortunately, by just missing the good throw, doesn't actually doesn't actually get that much that much that much uh, EXP. Also, the fact that yes. It, it but etiquette does have minus special attack, so actually, it is pretty important for etiquette. And I also believe Headstrong also has minus special attack, so mm -hmm. it's probably going to be important for both to actually go for extra exp and try and be higher level. Uh, at yeah. least for at least for Misty. Uh, Misty I don't know, actually not... have no idea how Dynamfist is e exp issue. There is a rare candy that you can pick up in a 
Cerulean City, that uh, classic like red, blue, yellow speedrunners, and I also believe Fire Red Leaf Green speedrunners do pick up if I'm uh, mis if I am if I am not mistaken. Yeah, that is correct. So the reason well, why I don't actually is don't, important well, I actually don't that... know if uh, if if Dynam knows about Candy is there. He probably does, but if he doesn't, if he chooses just to take the Walk of Shame instead. Yeah, so 15 is important because it's actually required. Uh, Misty's gym requirement is hitting level 15. Obviously, the earlier you get it, the more benefit you have from the higher level through Mount Moon, especially on the EV side. You do, you can just hit all the ranges after the uh, basement room. Uh, but yeah, there are a couple ways to fix it. One, you can just try to get a couple extra catches. You know, catching a Zubat, not usually worth a whole lot of EXP, but might be just enough. Route 4 is the same as Route 3, so Dynam can still see a Sandshrew on that route. He might also opt for a Rattata or Spiro if he sees it. Uh, if he catches Spiro, he's basically locked out of Firo, though, so that's not the most ideal. Rattata's okay. Uh, there's the Rare rare Candy. Uh, it is a bit of a detour because you got to go through two loading zones and then back. Uh, or there is one other thing you can do, which is to just do all of Nugget Bridge and up towards Bill's Cottage, which is required anyways to get the allotted EXP, and then fight Misty afterwards. Um, it's a bit, it's the unoptimal order, but at least you're not doing any extra detouring in that regards. Uh, and that's why you'll see a lot of runners run what's called a Cerulean split and not a Misty split, because there was always that backwards possibility. But at the top level, if you're not 15 for Misty, usually you're resetting after Moon. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, what Dynam's experience situation is like going to be coming out of this uh, Jesse and James fight. Um, and also what spawns he actually does see on the way through Rad 4 as Headstrong is our first runner into that grass finding a snake? Uh, snack. Pronounced snack. <laughs> you know what? But, uh, yeah, so Dynam, this is probably like the last chance to find like big pink thing before leaving. Unfortunately, does not find anything. So I don't think there's enough EXP even on this route. Like, even if you catch like rat plus bird plus, um, Sand Shrew. I don't think there's like enough EXP. So uh, Dynam you... does actually opt to go pick up the PP up because he's probably gonna have because he's probably gonna keep the fossil. Uh, Headstrong did not keep the PP up. Did not get the PP up, so it's most likely will be selling the fossil. And oh, yeah, Dynam oh, get oh, maybe a glowing, glowing maybe glowing a super size Sand Shrew might get yeah. actually oh, oh, get him there. But, and that's why you also see the two controller catch here because that's also worth again more EXP. Probably gonna wait for the attack cycle. Yeah, good call. Yeah, yeah, no, he needs the EXP. Like he absolutely needs the EXP. If he does not get fifth, he does not get fifteen here. He has to. Yeah, as oh, someone know, who's but... been in this situation more times than I'd really care to admit, going through here, um, the, these route four catches are actually worth a fair bit at times. Uh, though Ooh, over yeah. seven hundred, that was massive. Yeah, yeah that overall, was that <laughs> massive. Uh, Dynam did get bailed up, bailed up. He is going to get like some useless EXP on all of his other Pokemon as a smaller punishment. But I think the most important fact is the fact that you are level 15 slash 16. Uh, Etiquette also does pick up the PP up item. And we actually saw this from Headstrong. Uh, we have moves. We have moves to learn. Yeah. So uh, in the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, uh, there are specialized move tutors in three Pokemon centers scattered across the Kanto region that teach special moves to your starter. In Eevee, you learn a bunch of different moves of a bunch of different types, each one corresponding to one of the Eeveelutions, while uh, Pikachu learns various moves depending depicting historical versions of Pikachu, including Flying Pikachu and Surfing Pikachu. Uh, on the Eevee side, these are great. These are amazing. Early on, you get, like, incredible coverage. You get a fire move, a water move, an electric move. Later on, we'll get a psychic move. Uh, Pika does not quite have the same amount of coverage going on. We'll just be picking up the one move here, Zippy Zap, which is plus two priority and also always crits. Yeah, plus two priority, 50 base power, always crits. Uh, they actually use that move as a basis for, uh, I'm going to assume, a uh, Miascarada signature move because 
that move, that move is 70 base power and it also crits, but it doesn't have uh, a thing Priority. for... Yeah, so here we're gonna see slight differences, uh, some small differences. We're actually gonna see one of the use, one of the most useful things of uh, Eevee's uh, secondary effects in this fight against Misty, and that is the fact that Buzzy Buzz will always paralyze the star, will always paralyze the Starmie. So, so we're gonna see Headstrong set up an X special just so that we boost the items, boost our special attack. For those who don't know about X items, uh, X items are items that we that we can use in-game for costing a turn to boost our stats in this game because it's a Gen 7 game. Uh, they boost our, they raise our stats by two stages instead of one. And what normally is supposed to be at a cost of a lot more money, uh, they didn't actually think about that in this game. Uh, so, yeah. You see the paralysis here come into play where turn one, the Stami outspeeds us and gets... Uh, Gets a move off. Turn two, we that we then outspeed it, and then we KO, KO in return. Headstrong did get a burn on Eevee, which is a bit unfortunate. It does have to heal that off afterwards. But aside from that small caveat, uh, the fight for Headstrong was pretty good. Uh, that was the stat tracker. As for Pikachu, uh, the Pikachu fight is actually uh, a little bit different. Instead of using an X special and using a special attack, we actually want to use an X attack because Zippy Zap is actually a physical attack. And we're just going to use Zippy Zap twice. There is a bit of a risk here because you have to one-shot the Starmie in uh, this fight. If you don't one-shot the Starmie, there's a good chance that you just uh, die, which is not great. But, uh, but Dynam does hit a range if it was one. Yeah, yeah the, uh, I think the, based on the, the AVs, I think it is. Yeah, the, yeah let's see the, what Pikachu's special... stats here are. Okay, that yeah. was a range. Yeah, the, uh, the special moves for Eevee are incredibly busted. As you just mentioned, Buzzy Buzz, the electric move always paralyzes. Sizzly Slide, the fire move always burns. And Bouncy Bubble, the water move is like Giga Drain. It heals you. Uh, all of the special moves for Eevee are based off of the Eeveelution types. They are all incredibly busted, which is great for Eevee as kind of like the sole main for that first two-thirds of the run. The cost, however, is that we teach more moves on Eevee than we do on the Pikachu version. And it does add up. It does take quite a lot of time to have to teach four, in total, four special moves versus just the one for Pikachu. So... In that regard, Pikachu is kind of determined to be a little bit better through that early game, but having all the access to all that incredible coverage can also provide advantages throughout the uh, that two-hour section that we use that we use EV uh, as the main. Just also, wanna... no, sorry. Oh, yeah, I, I just want to point out real quick that all three of our runners have exactly 15 Pokemon each, so. Uh, despite all of the variations and whatnot, right now we're seeing them at about where they're shaking out for now. The amount of times that you disrupted me and we're both about to say the exact same thing has uh, happened way too many times. Look, Mom so. said it's my turn on the brain cell. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, so Headstrong is in a it technically in a theoretical lead because uh, the catch counts are all the exact same. And yes, I know there is the copy pasta that says it's not technically 30 seconds, but it is the but let's just hype just for math. Let's just like, hypothetically assume it is 30 seconds, okay? But but because all the catch counts are the same, and because Nugget Bridge is just uh, six fights in a row. Uh, yeah, it does seem to be clear that Headstrong is in a slight lead over every, everyone else. Um, yeah, thank you, Tipa, for p posting in the yeah. uh, the, co and, the copy and pasta. The, and the idea of that is that 30 is the base because that's just ex it, that's almost exactly how much it takes to uh, just get a catch with the um, like with the Pokedex screen or to get an evolution with the Pokedex screen. But really, the truth is that those those level ups do add up. Um, for example, we'll catch a couple Pokemon in Cubone and Machop. They are four level ups. So you're just like, okay, well, four is, well, that's eight seconds instead of just two extra seconds. But there's also the extra move learn that they had. So it gets a little bit wishy-washy in the early game. And it could even come down to small things like 
Like, is Bellsprout at a higher level and closer to evolving on Etiquette's side than Headstrong's side because he's got experience already? Those little time saves do add up and make things not always as clear cut, even though the catch rounds might be exactly the same. Like, the total number of overhead or the amount of overhead that's already completed could still be different. Yeah, and when you have three runners of this caliber, <laughs> all of those little differences are what are going to make and break the difference here. Alright, I just want to say, just say really quickly, Dynam decided to go for a little bit of a risk with this trainer fight and got and got like absolutely lucky. So, uh, these fight, these Nugget Bridge fights, it's pretty simple, at least for the five trainers. For Eevee, you click the super effective move, you win the game. Well, for, for the most part, there might be cases where you don't want to do that, but for the most part, just do that. Pikachu is even simpler, just hit the zippy zap button. The only exception is Trainer 3, where you... Most of the time, you do two-piece strats and just use Oddish to deal with a Sandshrew, whereas Pika just doesn't uh, do that, and you use that turn to heal. But Dynam actually choose, chose not to he not to even heal, despite the fact being half HP, and decided to headbutt twice the Sandshrew, but got lucky with a flinch, so... The Sandshrew does not become a pain. That, that Sandshrew can, I believe, has Sand Attack and Poison Sting. So if you don't KO it, then uh, bad things could happen to you. Go ahead and explain further the uh, benefits and disadvantages of using two controllers. Because we see two controller all the time in the catches, but for the fights, it's not as clear cut, is it? No, so two control, so two control, so actually one of the big differences between Eevee and Pikachu, I think, is that Eevee is just more about I'm gonna use Eevee solo most of the fights and just do that, whereas Pikachu, because of its uh, lack of coverage, has to rely on friends. Like, so it's more like Pikachu and friends versus uh, Eevee. Just like I'm just gonna do everything by myself, and thus, uh, oh. And thus, and thus, so we have to do 2P, and it does actually waste time, because a little bit of time, depending on the situation, because you have to, like, do two turns of inputs versus uh, one turn of inputs. But I'm going to stop that because uh, Airstrong has a count on her screen. Yeah, Route 25 uh, can have uh, Venonat and Squirtle for both players, Squirtle being the special spawn. Meowth is an Eevee exclusive spawn. Uh, so that is just an extra catch, an extra little bonus. Route 25 is kind of a weird one, because since it has that ledge, you can't just attack the grass right away. You have to do this uh, walking around. So that's part of the overhead that we talked about, is overhead could be as simple as, oh, I had to walk farther to catch this Pokemon than I normally would. And strong passing the trainers. Uh, something to note about trainer visions. For most trainer visions in this game, Trainer Vision is a uh, suggestion, mo like kind of like how most walls in a in video games are sometimes just a suggestion and not actually real. So, yeah, uh, Etiquette also does uh, pick, actually gets lucky with also another a cat spawn of uh, his his own. Uh, Dy uh, Dynam actually uh, picked up an Ether here, whereas both Headstrong and Etiquette will most likely skip the e the Ether. This is actually for a little bit. This leaf is also is going to be used in like the elite four, the elite four. But we'll get to that. But more importantly, it's actually going to set up something known as uh, God Menu. So who wants to explain God Menu? I can take I can take that for. So God Menu is that you just want the minimum number of inputs for using X attacks and X special attacks in your inventory. It's kind of automatic right from the beginning. Uh, weirdly enough, it's actually backwards. Uh, for the two different versions. Um, so we're going to set up a menu because they're laid out in rows of four, but you can just use a left input to get to the last item of your inventory or an up input to loop back down to the lower left item into your inventory. And we want our X attacks and X special attacks populated in those two slots. So for Eevee, the X special attack is in the lower left slot or the up input and the X attack is in the lower right slot which is the left input uh, and then it's reversed for the Pikachu version just because of how the items are used in the early game don't ask me how that happens it is very weird but it works out just the same way so Pikachu needs to pick up that ether to populate that inventory by one slot to get those items in that exact spot 
Uh, instead, the EV version players are going to wait and buy some paralyzed heals, which will occupy that slot that the Pikachu version does not get. So picking up the Ether or the Max Elixir um, doesn't matter in terms of its usage in the run. It only matters for how the inventory, the battle inventory, is set up for the run. Yeah, I think some of it has to do with the fact that uh, Pika, uh, Pika's pewter shop uh, completely skips uh, the burn heals and I think does slight, some slight other differences in that particular shopping trip. Yeah, it has it has something to do with like the order that you get the items uh, puts it in your inventory in that exact way. And then when you use up those items, it either like remembers where it was or doesn't. <laughs> it kind of it's, it's a wild. bit beyond my yeah it's a bit beyond my comprehension in terms of why it works out that way. But it just it just does. Um, I also think it's because um, and, and like the healing the healing items are all like grouped together, and then the X special like the X items are all grouped at the end. So like that never gets mixed up because they're technically in different pockets in the inventory um but yeah it's just they shuffle like halfway through the run um but it all works out because it's been tested many many times so picking up that one item or not uh just sets up this perfect very clean menu yeah you'll see that also a little bit uh later on when our runners are going into their catching pocket uh to deal with their great balls and their berries and as we go through, you'll see like the way that the items churn through uh, in that inventory. All right. Yeah, it's weird. When you you you, uh, you usually have pokeballs in that top left slot, and then you sell all of the pokeballs, so the raspberries goes into that top left slot. But you do accumulate more pokeballs later, but they don't repopulate top left. They go later in your inventory. So it's just it's just managing little things like that. Um, can make a very big difference at the top level. All right, just want to give a quick say. Uh, throughout this entire race, rest, normally uh, our racers like to like talk in our in our chat. Normally, and like you know, say stuff and like have banter. Throughout this entire race, they have not said a single word in chat. So I'm going to assume that all three of them are taking this race extremely ser extremely seriously. Which with how, is yeah, with how close they are right now, I'm not surprised. Okay. And with anyway, on we, the line. Yeah, oh, okay, so only Dynam has been in chat, but I think the only thing he said was just the AV spread of his uh, Pika. Anyway, we are going into Route 6. My least favorite. And here we're going to have some uh, catches. Uh, in Eevee, I think there isn't really anything required. The only thing is you want Eevee to be a certain level. Do you know what that number is, T-Pat? I'm not yeah, even yeah, that level is 18 because you need level 18 to be able to KO uh, Rivals Pidgeotto in the very next fight. If you're not 18, that's uh, unlikely to happen, but at 18, it's guaranteed. Uh, also, 18 is a fairly comfortable number to also outspeed the Pidgeot. It's not guaranteed, though, because it's just dependent on the AV spread. Uh, and Dynam gets the early dog. Let's go. Yeah. So, yeah, in Pika, you either need the early dog or and technically arguably better but also not very consistent you also you would prefer to have early abra and try to get that evolved but obviously that's not that's about, what a four percent chance in this route or something it's less five, it's five percent on this route and on route seven which is next to celadon it's four percent because that extra one percent goes to cadavera all mm. right so four, so five percent but thankfully dynam does get early growlith and actually getting growlith first is optimal because if you get any other pokemon to spawn like say said jigglypuff uh you can uh ha get the growth to get more exp to get to level 18 by the second trainer in route nine. oh god what is the yeah the, yeah that's the, the one the sancho eradicate trainer yeah that's route nine yeah, yeah thank you and of uh, course you know Level 18, depending on what nature in your IV spread on the Growlithe, can also just help smooth out a lot of ranges between now and then. Funny enough, that same trainer is going to be a problem for both Etiquette and Headstrong, because typically you want to be level 20 
for that trainer to guarantee that the Sandshrew dies to a Bouncy Bubble, but they're both minus special attack, so it will be a range no matter what. They'll so have to be level 23. Mm -hmm. Kind, of waiting, kind of waiting for the experience. Yeah. We'll say a Headstrong has done the trainer pass on this route successfully, so has not hit those encounters yet. Has not hit those encounters. We have to wait a little bit for both Dynam and Etiquette to do it. Headstrong, I don't think caught that many. I think she only caught Vulpix. Yeah, I only saw Vulpix and uh, nothing else. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm not seeing anything on her tracker either. Marked. Yeah, yeah, yeah so not only marked. catching well, not marked. So yeah, only catching one Pokemon here. Not ideal. Uh, Dynam nice, does nice make pass trainer Dynam. pass, so no problems there. Dynam it's caught, what is it, three Pokemon? Yeah, we caught the Rat, caught the Growlithe. All right, and now watch, watch Etiquette's pass. He's going to do it at an angle because he's a bit more comfortable with that. It looks really funky with that little juke to the left, but it was what? just perfect for him. What? Yeah, that so, is ridiculous. So most I have, runners uh, never will... seen that, and uh, see, seeing it, I will never go for it. Yeah. So Same. most runner, most runners like to run straight north and south, and it's pretty simple. It's just like you have to split them right down the middle. But there's a little splotch on the ground, a little darker patch in the dirt that marks almost perfectly right where the trainer visions end for both of the left and right trainers. So Etiquette has mentioned that like he actually gets a better angle on it by going at an angle, especially going north, because your character model will cover up that splotch on the ground that he's trying to put uh, one of his characters like foot on. Mm -hmm. um, so he was looking. For, so in that particular pass, he likes to put his right foot on that splotch, and he noticed he was just a little bit to the right, so he made a juke to the left just to hit it, and it was just perfect. And then he did the hokey pokey, turned himself about. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is a uh, boat rival or rival three. Uh, they're both fairly similar. Uh, Eevee sets up an, I guess Eevee sets up an X special turn one, and then at some point sets up an X attack to deal with the Oddish, I think. Yep. yep. Turn two, <laughs> because it, the X attack works for both the Pikachu and the Oddish. So, no matter which comes out second, you always X attack. Yeah, okay. whereas uh, Pika is just going to set up an X attack, and then uh, in Dynam's case, because we have the Growlithe, we're going to rely on Flamethrower to take out the Oddish. Yeah, because uh, for some reason, this uh, puppy that we just caught learns uh, Flamethrower. It's actually very important that you actually have the lore up when catching the Growlithe, because if you don't have the lore up, it will not learn Flamethrower. Yeah, I've learned that one the hard way. It's kind of ridiculous that Growlithe knows Flamethrower, an incredibly powerful move uh, at the level it's caught, which is level 17, whereas Vulpix does not get that same be benefit. But yeah, the, fi the fight of Boat Rival is uh, fairly straightforward. It's only a bit problematic if you are minus attack on Pika, like most, like most other fights where I believe this Pidgeot would then be uh, Pidgeotto, I mean, would then be a range to kill with plus two Zippy Zap with a crit, but uh, because we're not that, we can just uh, be completely fine. And also, Growlithe does actually have another utility move that's useful for it, and that is Helping Hand, which is by using up your turn, you can give a boost to uh, your partner Pokemon of 50%, which is going to be uh, pretty useful, not just on Growlithe, but another Pokemon that... Uh, we uh, will be catching uh, later on, which is a requirement in Pika, but not necessarily required in Eevee. Yeah, the issue, of course, with Pidgeot is that it does come with every Pokemon trainer's favorite attack ever. We all know it. We all hate it. It's Sand Same Attack. <laughs> Sand um, attack. Yeah, accuracy. Uh, shout no out, one's, shout no out to that switch in the forest in Oras, my guy. The Pooch of Sand Attack. Your shoutouts to just Oras in general. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be at RPG Limit Break. Yeah, I'm, I'm really like, excited. Is it like next week already? Uh yeah. Unfortunately it is next week, which is unfortunately why I won't be running in my previously scheduled race tomorrow because oh god, I have to pack. Oh god. Yeah. Kind kinda important. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, Headstrong, what are you doing? Make my heart flutter. 
<laughs> Headstrong was going was attacking. Headstrong, the, uh... yeah. Headstrong now gets the reverse pass. We now have to do like the Which, very very long walk simple, to. But then she moved to the right and then had to correct to the left, and I was like, ah. Yeah. No. Luckily, if you fail that pass, it's not that bad, especially on the EV side. Uh, each trainer only has one Pokemon, and you'll only have to fight one of the two. Uh, but, you know, that is still time loss. That is still an optional hit. Yeah, it's about 40 seconds, but it is kind of... It's kind of the the least punishing optional to hit. So you might even see, uh, for example, the last rotator on Route 9... Um, watch for it on etiquette screen. Etiquette will never risk it. He will just stand and wait for that cycle to play out because that is there. There are some very dangerous optionals. Thankfully, the Vermilion Skip is not one of them. Yeah, um, we'll talk some more about some uh, incredibly yeah, dangerous nice, optionals once nice we get later route on. Nine Chansey, by the way. Yeah, sadly, uh, that Chansey uh, will not uh, be caught because it is a bit too far out the way to actually go back there. And by the time you probably go back there, it's probably despawned already, so. I think you have to fight like a trainer and go through another cut bush or something. It's, it's I don't strange. know. I get, I get, how many times do I have to tell you I don't play Kanto? All yeah, right, watch, gonna... Etik watch Etiquette again, kind of attack that. Oh, oh no, he missed it. Oh, no, that is a Finally shame. got punished for the angled. <laughs> that, I'm surprised he missed that because it looked like he was right down the middle. Yeah, like, so th thankfully this train is not that difficult. You just uh, bouncy bubble and just think, hey, don't worry, it's planned. Just get, he gets the extra XP early. It's fine. Yeah, calculated, calculated, all it's... according to Keikaku. And, and he did Trust get me, the extra it. 92 is going to matter. See, he gets the 21 now. It, 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 don't 21, worry. He gets the C stats. Got the and heal. He gets full the heal. All right, technically he gets more bowls. All right, so one of the things to know, Headstrong did fight the pick, uh, both the uh, the picnic, the, uh, the picnicker, I believe. Uh, Eevee do, does the first fight on one P, but uh, Dynam has to do two P on this fight because uh, what the Eevee actually you need to like you need the X attack to actually one hot one to KO this Eevee, and then the Gloom you also need to you sometimes depending on what what people opt for the Eva just headbutt plus flamethrower hope that KOs the gloom or if you just want to play it much safer you X special the Growlithe and uh thing also I headstrong I don't think and Anakin's like got a chancy on five is he gonna go for that one also no no that's the second chancy we've seen uncaught also I did want to mention that on headstrong this is actually unusual this is the fight I was talking about with the sand true um, even at the level she's at, it was not guaranteed that that Sandshrew was going to be KO'd, so a bit safer to go for the two controller stat, uh, strat here. It is slower, but it is safer mm -hmm. because of minus special attack, and this is really the first fight where that minus special attack is now going to start coming into play. We'll see that from this fight all the way through J and J3. Yeah. yeah, having minus special, having minus any offensive stat is pretty bad regardless of which version minus special on pika kind of more hurts and like doesn't hurt too much it's not like the worst thing in the, it's not it's not something you want to deal with obviously but it's not the worst thing in the world uh but now we're going into one of the most important uh catches route 10 and mount moon uh, no route 10 and Ro rock tunnel, rock tunnel. yeah so, so route Route 10 is an interesting one because there are basically five main catches, Nidoran male, Nidoran female, Rattata, Spiro, and Krabby, with Krabby being kind of the lowest chance to spawn. This yeah. can really uh, make or break a run because it's worth so many catches. So typically what runners will like to do is kind of see what their planned catches are going into this route. So for example, Etiquette's catch trackers on the screen says 53 plan he opts to not even touch his catch tracker just to know where he's at and where he stands going into this route if you're ahead you're like okay i could probably skip one or two of these things and still be okay for the rest of the run whereas if you're still at about 50 plan you're gonna need to catch four of those five things pretty much guaranteed to make sure that you're still in a good position 
to be able to make it to that 50 catch plan. Otherwise, you're going to have to do all of your backups, which are more punishing later. You'd rather catch these easier catches earlier. And this is like the last set of, quote, easy catches. In fact, you can YOLO throw a lot of these small Pokemon now that we switched to double great balls. Even without hitting a nice throw, uh, even Nidorans are almost guaranteed. And with a nice throw, they are guaranteed. Yeah, Pastron getting really good luck here. Getting Nido male, Nido female, and now a, and now a Spiro. Honestly, uh, after this, that's, 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 she could just leave. Like, yeah, that's, even that's if perfect. Rat doesn't, like, Big Rat doesn't spawn, you can always catch that later. Correct. And Krabby is just like, a spawn anyway, so Hedgehog can just leave now. She yeah, doesn't need to do anything perfect. else. Yeah, that's the one big uh, thought process that I had when analyzing this route, is that Rattata is the one thing that doesn't matter because it does spawn in so many places. It spawns in Route 17, on Route 21, in Mansion, and they're pretty common there as well. Even on Route 7, you could catch a Rattata and Raticate. So you actually don't lose any of those catches by not seeing it, but those other three, the Nidorans and the Spiro, those are your important ones. And if you see all three of those, you are golden, no matter if you don't see the um, if you don't see the Krabby or the Rattata. As Pedstrong does uh, this fight, which is 1P in P in Eevee, but 2P in Pika, Etiquette now just finally reached uh, and this is the complete as well as, uh, opposite where you just see. Well, in this case, Etiquette waited for all the spawns to populate, which is just four in this grass. The idea for that is that whenever you catch something, you are automatically on a catch chain. And even a catch chain of one increases that Pokemon spawn chance by 5%. It displaces the percentage of all the other Pokemon. So it's like, okay, I'll wait for all four things to pop up and then you know, go and catch the things I want. But all he had was a Nidoran female, a Nidorina, and then a Rattata. So there's a couple different ways that you can do to reset the route. One, you can repel and relure. You can do the rocket grunt fight and then walk back up. Or you could even like go in the Pokemon Center and then back out, which is like the slowest option. Yeah. Uh, oh, that Fero just Whoa, barely got it. That no, was wow, a that's, that's a hip. That that's that's a that's a hip box and a half. Uh, I never like he got him with like the tip of the beak, just absolutely extending out. So yeah, yeah I am only catching rude. two things here, being uh the spear the spear but more importantly he, he does get the nidoran mail which is very very important for pika not really necessary for eevee but for pika definitely going to be more important for rocket hideout later uh etiquette only getting uh two things in also in route in route 10 being the nidoran mail and the nidoran fear and heads these catches for he these like encounter luck for headstrong is like really good like early i was like what really early right horn that's really good for that's yeah, really like good for the uh, stage because i think i think etiquette will be okay because again i mentioned that high catch plan it's at 53. once he deletes uh spiro hero it's still 51. so he's still at least a catch ahead even without the spiro and remember rat and radicate can spawn in other places so i think he's actually quite okay to leave with two of the i call it two of the four not including radita uh, and yeah. yeah, Headstrong's luck has been amazing through Route 10 and early Rock Tunnel. Again, make or break part of your catch route is happening right now. It's not just it's not just the, the for catch route, but early Rhyhorn is just no matter what, just really good. And the reason is that in this game, there's no bicycle, but you can ride Pokemon. And Rhyhorn is one of the uh like essentially the, the fastest like, pokemon that we can get at this point at this point yeah. so and it's like middle tier overall um it's like decently fast it's oh. definitely faster and wow dynam also got an yeah, dynam actually actually there was another glowing one later that he could have caught instead but yeah but dynam and uh headstrong getting really nice uh early right horns hopefully etiquette also gets a nice right horn because you actually do save in round time actually etiquette chooses to Ooh, go he's gonna back go up Interesting. Oh, let's see. He's uh, got a I bet he goes for this. Yeah, he does go for it. I don't. Yeah, he. Does he have a rat caught? I actually don't know. Uh, he does have a rat caught already. So yeah, he wants the extra exp early, if he can help it. Because uh, especially the fact that you're minus special, so you definitely need as much exp as you can get, just to yeah. make the late game fights a little easier, a little better. 
And looking ahead, you mentioned that Nido King, specifically for Pika, is vitally important for the run, with the backup being Nido Queen, but it's not as good. Uh, we like how Pikachu uses Oddish as like a helper and a partner Pokemon. We're starting to get to that stage where Nido King becomes that helper and partner Pokemon through the rocket sequence with the use of Poison Jab, uh, sometimes Thrash, uh, and Helping Hand. And yeah, Thrash Eevee is more... doesn't necessarily need that, but has adopted some of those strats. Um, if anything, to like save some menuing and save some super potions um, to be able to adopt those strats, though it isn't necessary to do it. Uh, but Rhyhorn is actually really rounds out what Eevee really needs because it, Rhyhorn comes with a move Drill Run, which is actually pretty good power at the cost of it only being 95% accurate and can help out in a couple situations. Um, in addition to it being the faster ride Pokemon. Um, so if you miss out on Rhyhorn, it actually is, uh, it, it's, it's just like sad because it feels like a bit like a slow death because you could get it in the first room and save yourself like a full minute uh, over just not catching it at all. Yeah. Uh, speaking of this like rock tunnel, like both, he both Hedgehog and Dynam aren't seeing a lot. They're seeing Greyhorn, they're seeing Giant Boulder, but they haven't seen a lot of like the nice Evo catches such as uh, Machop, Cubone, uh, I, well, I guess Dynam can't go for Zubat, but Zubat would be nice Another also one. for Headstrong because Dynam caught the Zubat earlier. It does lock him out of Golbat, so unless he chooses to catch one, which- uh, Which is awful. Uh, I wouldn't it's... recommend personally yeah, with catching Firo. Golbat, but- I think you know, if uh, you're you, really would that you desperate, agree that you Firo is like the worst catch to go for. But uh, but uh, yeah, they're not seeing any of those. They still have time. It's not like you need to get them now. But ideally, you want to get them as soon as as soon as soon as po as soon as possible. Ideally, uh, I'm, Etiquette I'm actually so goes back right. and actually catches. I believe both Spiro, both and Rat and Spiro. And does he catch anything else? Um, that was on his second trip, was the Raticate and the Spiro. I'm yeah. so curious to see how this play plays out. I actually think it, it's going to really go in his favor because, again, some of those adopted strats with Nidoking, Etiquette is going to go for. So since he had the Nidoran male in his party, to now get it some Raticate experience and all the experience you're going to get in Rock Tunnel, uh, to which the most of it is going to come off of a Graveler, uh, I think this is going to end up being a pretty good play. So while you might say, oh, he just entered Rock Tunnel, he actually has the most, well, yeah, he has the most catches right now at 27, which is quite high going into Rock Tunnel. And hopefully he'll have 33, 34 exiting Rock Tunnel, which again, high catch count. You can cash in uh, late game. All right, Headstrong catching uh, Z Zubat. Etika being the only person as of right now seeing a Machop, but does not get early right horn quite yet. Uh, Dynam choosing to evolve his uh, Nido Reno, uh, yeah, Nido Reno into a Nido King right now. You can you as long as you do it bef as long as for Pika you do this before uh, Tower Rival or Rival Four. Uh, you you you'll be fine, but it's obviously more convenient to do it in a menu. Uh, that is because the fights here, at least the Hiker and the Ace Trainer, Pika must do this as a two. Uh, well, at least the Hiker you must do it as a two controller fight. And for Eevee, you one controller all of the fights. Yeah. And Strong does get uh, herself a Cubone, so all she really wants is a Machop here, and I, I guess Ratchel, but that's uh, that's that's that, 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 that ha if it happens, it happens. Yeah, uh, Ratchel is kind of an interesting one because, like the Chanseys, it's the special spawn, it's the 0.5. You'd never bank on it, but it is worth two Pokemon. Weirdly enough, it has one of the lowest catch rates in all of Rock Tunnel. Um, the, all the starters do with Bulbasaur's actually getting a uh, this game specific catch rate boost because it does appear in the early game. And I guess Game Freak was merciful in increasing Bulbasaur's catch rate. So that way you didn't have to catch a base 45 mod with only Pokeballs. Yeah. Um, yeah, as we go continuing through, uh, well, 
Rock Tunnel. We're gonna go through a bunch of trainers. He Ooh, almost hit that hydra. Careful, that was a uh, careful dynam. Close and does some of the two controller here. He's not gonna catch anything, but this fight is the fight that does require a uh, two controller for Pika because in because unfortunately we don't have a water move to deal with the with the right horn. So instead, what we do is turn one X attack plus Zippy Zap to KO the Machop and turn two double kick plus helping hand. Only bad if you have minus attack. You will see that combination come up a little bit later in the run, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're gonna see me saying a lot for Pika. Uh, only bad if it has a minus attack. Maybe just due to right horn just being <laughs> annoying to deal with as a Pika player because your strongest fighting move is double kick and you don't get anything else. That was almost a like gamer throwing it. Oh! You almost got a, uh, you almost got an excellent on the Zubat. Oh, oh, that was, that was almost bad for Dynam. Uh, Double Kick actually missed the range. Ooh. If Raihon went for Drill Run on, um, Pika, that was, that would be really bad. Oh, I mean, it has like one HP left, so you could probably just Poison Jab and revive Pika and you'd probably be fine, but yeah. Yeah, a, little, uh, so, a bit, bit scarier than it needed to be. Up, oh, Onyx. Hi, Onyx. Hi, Snake. Hi, Rock Snake. How yeah, you doing? Yeah, uh, yeah, I didn't no, think so. no, no. <laughs> Onyx is also one of the worst catches in the game. Um, one, it has a low catch rate, but more importantly, you just like can't hit excellence on it. It's its circle hitbox is much higher up, but for some reason, like the game is pretty good about auto correcting to hit the middle of the circle, but for Onyx, it's not. Um, so even hitting a nice throw feels like a challenge on it. So you typically don't want to waste your time with an Onyx. Getting it in Mount Moon is okay because that lower level, lower CP value gives you a better chance to get that catch rate higher. Um, but in Rock Tunnel, like it's not even a coin flip to get in. It's it's typically in the 40% or worse range. Yeah. Here's the other fight that's uh, two player, uh, two pl uh, two controller where you have to set up an X attack and then KO the, uh, could both the Kadabra and the Vulpix. Uh, Pika can do this fight, one P, uh, one controller. You do risk a burn from a flamethrower from, uh, Vulpix. I believe it has, I believe it's flamethrower, I might be wrong there. But, uh, Etika <laughs> gets Roblox by a Graveler. Uh, Etika still does not have Rhyhorn, which, uh, is, it's fine for right now because it is, he's, like, on the second, like, he went past the first ladder, so there's still time, but it's something you want to see. Uh, Dynam finally getting the final catch of Rock of uh, Rock Tunnel being the Machop. That was like the one thing that he was waiting for, and he finally gets it. Yeah, I think he was kind of sweating because you look at look at his catch count of 28, which is on the pretty low side for exiting tunnel. You'd like to see Pika 31, 32. Pika tends to be pretty low on catches for the. For the most, for the most part, at least I, at least from experience. But I might be, uh, but yeah, he does. Dynam finally gets uh, a a machop, but he gets that to his party, which is really nice. Just, oh yeah, Dynam doesn't have. Uh, He's gonna opt to go for Golbat. No, no. Is he going for Golbat? Is he that desperate yeah, for catches? Yeah, yes, he, went, he, he, he is going it. for Golbat. So this is kind of a weird situation. I uh, wish he would have. I guess he doesn't have. Yeah, he that. doesn't have Cubone yet, so I guess he kind of needs like the catches. But it's not really going well for him at all. He's gonna try again. Like it's an interesting choice. Oh, he Ooh. misses the, the circle and that's what, as well. That's why those flying catches can be annoying <laughs> because they look like you're gonna hit it and then it was yeah. just Uh out. Dynam, you might want to get the collage ready. After this race. <laughs> oh, he went for a center throw and whiffed. Yeah, and so he yeah, he is choosing to yeah. bail. So he 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 burned six great balls, which can be a little bit um <laughs> a little bit iffy. Um, so I think he just opted to cut his losses there because you don't have infinite great balls. Uh, so he wanted to probably conserve some of those resources. I saw e or I saw etiquette just like mash the capture button. It's, I'm not sure if he like dropped his controller, but it caught my attention. It was just like capture taken, capture taken, capture taken. Oh. Probably, 
It's probably a very important photo. So, yeah, maybe there that, was, some, maybe there was something the, on screen right before he went into this fight. Uh, uh, Headstrong see. leaves tunnel first. I think Diamond would have left first if he didn't go for the gold bat, but yeah, we Headstrong so, leaves first with a catch of thirty and a time Swallow. of one fifteen forty ish, which is pretty quick. Um, like you're you're generally pretty happy with that kind of time. Um, you probably wish you probably had one more catch in your pocket, uh, but that's not unrecoverable. Uh, if we're looking yeah. at Headstrong's catch route, uh, I think that one catch might just be like Raticate or a Jigglypuff. Um, like if you get those two catches, then you're at your 32, and you're in for a pretty normal end game here. Yeah. But the catch route is a little bit tight on Headstrong's screen. You're looking ahead. You need late Pidgey. You need Ghastly and Psyduck and Coughing. At the moment, you don't need Tentacool, which is good, so you still have that as a kind of an emergency option. But the catch rod is still pretty tight, especially since you don't have Jigglypuff or... Uh, yeah, like Jigglypuff, it feels as like you got one more chance when you're running past Route 7, and if you don't get it, you're losing a catch there. Yeah, and one then thing you to... start having to go through your backup catches. Yeah, one thing to note is that despite despite uh, Headstrong only having a uh, thirty, would you like to have a uh, thirty-one? Headstrong doesn't have the uh, is not is the only person here, the only racer here who has not who has sold the Helix fossil, or just sold the fossil in general. So uh, she can't go for that backup, whereas our other two runners can, and this might actually be the saving crutch for Dynam because. Dynam leaving at 28, not ideal, especially also the fact that Dynam left second and is behind two caches. I want to mention really quick is that Etiquette still does not have a Rhyhorn, and he's going to be on the last room in a moment here. Yeah, no Rhyhorn is uh, kind of cringe in a way, but hopefully, uh, hopefully we do see Rhyhorn. There's like one more chance. Come on, game. That's oh, Kangaskhan! Kangaskhan, I think he's thinking about it. He, he's got it. He's got the lure thing on the screen. Oh, he's got to be thinking about this. Oh, he yeah, doesn't go for it. it. Okay. What? I I could see it either way. In this case, Etiquette actually doesn't need the experience per se. Uh, but if he doesn't get Rhyhorn, the one catch of the Kangaskhan could have kept him on that even catch count. Because even odd being like most of your catches come in evolution pairs. So that might have. <laughs> the thought was for DNF. -y. No, no, it's not. Oh. Okay. I mean, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. Funny. It has like very few chances to get Rhyhorn. And uh, if not, he's going to be like super far behind from our run. He I is leaving with the I don't, highest. I don't actually believe him that he said that with the thought was for DNFing, but he did pause for a few more seconds than, <laughs> uh, than what was normal. But it was very funny that the uh, that the uh, the lure text came at the same time the Kangaskhan was right there. And final chance for Rhyhorn. Oh, is he just kind of He is around. waiting. No, I, I don't think he's gonna wait for spawning. this. Ah! Oh, it spawned right on him. He got it at the last second. Oh, that! Oh, that's a clutch for it's, for Erica. It is kind of annoying that he, that he spawned at the very, very end. But uh, it, it's clutch, but it's it's still a little disheartening considering that his catch count is still at uh, it's gonna be thirty four with this, which is good. But you look at the time and you see 119.30 and ticking, and you're still not out of Rock Tunnel. That is a bit on the sluggish side uh, for this section. Yeah, but at the very least, you have a Rhyhorn, so it's still going to be... At least you're going to have now... Find, like the, the Rhyhorn is not really there for mostly for EXP. I mean, it is still very good for EXP, but it's mostly the fact that you have like the faster ride and etiquette unfortunately getting like the rotten luck of just getting it last is really and, and really... not only last but he actually waited for it yeah which isn't great I, how much time I, do you I, lose I honestly, if you don't have a rhyhorn just it's a walking? it's about it's between about like 40 and 60 seconds uh, but can also but can also lose you uh two turns because if the raichu comes out second on this tower fight, uh, you'll have to lose a turn to it because Drill Run can kill at plus two. 
um, but Headbutt cannot. And then typically, and this was again a borrowed strat from Pika, is that Eevee plus Rhyhorn is more likely to get a two-shot on J and J than just EV solo attacking. Ooh, so interesting. You, so you might lose a turn there. It's not guaranteed. It is a little bit risky, um, but definitely interesting. Dynam going for uh, mid, I wouldn't call this late Pidgeotto. I wouldn't call it early Pidgeotto. I call this it's mid Pidgeotto. Mid. And again, had to use another double Great Ball. Missed the circle, but did get the catch. So they get the uh, catch. So not, actually, not don't know. Too many more great Wait, balls when there. does this evolve? Actually, that's a that's a question. Uh, I believe it's still a level thirty six evolution. I could be wrong. I'm, in fact, I'm gonna check it right now. Pichets. Yeah, it's an interesting yeah, it's decision to. So it's, it's interesting it's a decision that he goes away. for this. Is it EXP reasons? Or is it? I actually don't. I actually have no idea why why you would go. Uh, Dynam says having a time here, bad XP, bad catches. So maybe a little bit of both. Hmm. It's kind of again, as someone who rarely read this game. Oh, there's a yeah, there's a Jigglypuff. Yeah, very, form. very clutch Jigglypuff for Headstrong. Uh, I'd yeah. say that at this moment, Headstrong is in the most comfortable position is in the lead on plot progression, um, is only one poke behind etiquette in terms of catch count. Yeah. He's already through that rival four fight, about to enter Celadon. Um, and that catch count is actually pretty solid. Again, it's it's a little bit tight, but probably just barely the most comfortable position. You compare that to Dynam, who just took the lead in terms of pro plot progression, but is four Pokemon behind, um, which is a lot less comfortable. Uh, you're also seeing the Raticate here for Headstrong on Route 7. So pretty solid Route 7 uh, set of spawns. Yeah. So this Weirdly is enough, make fun fact, headstrong. the the, uh, the special spawn on Route 7 is not Chansey. It's Porygon, which uh, tends to freak people out because Porygon is actually a free Pokemon that you can get in the run. So catching it is actually a complete waste of time. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, so Headstrong is now five, like despite the fact that Dynam is now ahead in like plot progression, Dynam does uh, sorry Headstrong does have five Pokemon advantage, which is like a really big significant advantage. Like, Headstrong probably can just like start like cutting a lot of uh, Pokemon Pokemon out of the uh, late game late game catch late game catches, which is actually a really nice thing to have. And also getting that Raticate now is actually pretty good for EXP. Like getting Eevee even more EXP here is a uh, pretty nice and also Eevee is now going to learn of the final special move I guess yes and so that this is a uh, glitzy glow which is yes. 90 base power special that also gets grants you a light screen so yeah that's so this is be... where the this is where the Espeon Umbreon special moves are and yes the Umbreon special move is called Batty Bad that is not a made-up name it is called Batty Bad uh, it is also the same it's except it's physical and sets up a reflect uh, but we want, it's not so much the light screen that we're looking for, though it does come in handy. Um, it's, it, yeah, it's a psychic it's coverage. Psychic against all the poison types in the rocket base. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so now we're heading into, uh, rock, Rocket Hideout, and, uh, this is where having a bad Pika or bad Eevee really starts to, really starts to hurt. Uh, yeah, especially if you have minus attack Pika. Oh, this, this entire area is really just a, a pain. Especially the last, like, the later fights. Yeah, that's going to be something interesting to see for both of yeah, and, to... and the pain point for the Eevee side is not necessarily having bad attack or bad special attack. It's just having bad experience. Um, because experience is king when it comes to the EV version. Um, for example, Headstrong is already level 28, already has access to Double Edge, was able to Oko that Raticate with Double Edge, which at 28, 29 is a range, and at 30 is still a range, but is a better one. Um, so Headstrong is probably feeling pretty good. Again, Adamant EV, uh, that plus attack nature at level 28, you're gonna see Double Edge be used to its full effect in this section of the run Ooh. and it started there. Ooh, nice Abra, nice careful movement to get it. Cause again, Abra will teleport and despawn if you approach it anywhere in, in its front 180 degree of vision. So that was 
that was that was pretty good for Medikit's side. But yeah, having uh, having EXP for EV tends to be the most beneficial thing uh, over just having attacker special. Yeah, uh, first fight, uh, the first like big major fight, well, well, second fight is the Hypno. Uh, Dynam did have a death, well, had the Nido King die, which is not the end of the world. End of the world, you just revive it in the fight and be completely fine. Um, this fight, I actually don't know how bad this fight is for um, EV. Can be a bit annoying if you're Pika, Pika against the Hypno, but I think Eevee's bet fine, especially if you have Double Edge, I suppose. Yeah, but... double having Double Edge head, going into the Rocket section is so beneficial, and really the earlier you have it, the more time you save. Um, it's like... <sighs> I'm thinking of like when's the earliest possible you can have it, and I guess in theory, the earliest could be on Route Nine with like really amazing like glowing chancy catches. But getting it for like say the Kangaskhan trainer, which is the second trainer in Rock Tunnel, um, has definitely happened to me multiple times. And you can start saving time by using Double Edge from that fight onward. But it's really beneficial to get it at least before the Hypno fight. Because the Hypno can put you asleep, and then it would cost you an extra turn to heal it. And if you're only using Headbutt, it's an X attack and a two shot. So you're looking at a three or four turn fight, but with Double Edge, you can two controller the fight and beat it in one turn, which alone covers the cost of uh, teaching Double Edge in the first place. Yeah. Uh, this grammar, ne this next fight, this grammar can be a bit of a pain of a pain to deal with. Uh, there are plenty of different ways to deal with it in both Pikachu and Eve and Eevee. Uh, one of the ways to deal with Pikachu is you can just X Special Thunderbolt that, unless your minor special attack does KO for the most part, the other way to deal with it is, this is the best way to deal with it without needing to menu. The other way to deal with it is you can actually uh, move Rhyhorn early and uh, just do the fight with Rhyhorn plus Nidoking and then you just use X Attack plus Drill Run. Which is probably what Eevee is gonna do, I think. For the Grimer? Yeah. Um, the Grimer, it's just Glitzy Glow. And it, if with, with high special attack and Oko, but is usually just a straight two shot. Yeah, but they're both um, minus special attack. I guess it is only it, problematic. I guess it's not that problematic if it minimizes because you have a uh, Rhyhorn, Rhyhorn, and uh, thanks to uh, Stomp's mechanics, it not only bypasses. Um, Accuracy, no, yeah, it, it, the... it doubles, but in this yeah. case, that's strong with plus attack. It actually double edge the Grimer uh, if she wants uh, to. No, it went for Glitzy Glow and X Special. And that's fine too. Like, that, yeah, that's fine. It's a range, but it worked out in this case. Yeah. Uh, Etiquette is also not only level 28, but the Nido King is level 28. So you're kind of seeing a, a, a variety of. Um, options here. Having level 28 for the Hypno with Nido King is good, but as you saw, is still a range with Poison Jab. Uh, in this case, it worked out. It worked out just okay. Oh, also the Eevee's dead. That's why he went for Nido King. Yeah, it looks like he went for Double Edge on the previous fight, but knew that he didn't need. He's not going to use Eevee again until he gets to Jesse and James. So just opted to use that as the heal turn. Okay, no, Nido, that's the first Nido time King I've seen that. Uh, the main attacker here. Uh, yeah, the that's the first time I've seen a Nido King plus uh, Ry uh, Rhyhorn for the Hypno fight. Um, yeah, Nido King is just going to handle uh, a lot of hideout here. So again, it's like some borrowed Pika strats. And the idea for the Eevee side is that since you're not utilizing Eevee, you don't have to heal Eevee at all. So any extra turns like what you saw in the Hypno, you can just use to either revive or do an extra heal instead of having a menu outside of battle. So you're minimizing menus and you're minimizing your super potion usage by getting a pretty effective use out of Nido King. Yeah. Dynam actually does this puzzle correctly. There's, I have accidentally messed up a little bit in this puzzle and actually cooked, there's a Pokeball in there that has a TM for rest. Don't, don't ask how I know this. Uh, but yeah, now we're going to go into the Jesse and James fight. I'm pretty sure most people are going to be doing, uh, well, Headstrong's going to be doing the fight slightly different, I believe, but most, because mo I believe both Etiquette and, um, uh, uh, and Dynam will be using, I believe, Nido King and Rhyhorn. At least in Pika, you, you, if you have Rhyhorn, 
you can do the Rhyhorn strats for this fight, which you're using essentially setting up the Rhyhorn and using X attack plus drill run to essentially uh, KO um, the Arbok. Actually, go for target to the we Okay, that was a mistake. Uh, you target the Arbok, you try and KO that, and then you use an X attack to essentially make drill run do huge amounts of damage. That's kind of like a normal fight. Ooh, 25 have missed the range. That's interesting. Yeah. So that's why this is a little kind of iffy. Um, the other weird thing about that is that um, plus two drill run Arbok is a pretty good range. Um, did not get it in this case. Plus four drill run the Weezing is actually a pretty bad range. So uh, if I think it might be better at 26 though. 49. Oh, no, that's not good. Uh, that is that is absolutely minus attack on the Rhyhorn, unfortunately, because 49 at 25 would be minimum with neutral. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that's a bit unfortunate. The so what what I think you're going to see is what's happening on a headstrong screen, which is not Needle King, but Eevee. Well, in this case, I think we're seeing uh, Glitzy Glow. No, we um, saw X attack. Uh, no, I believe we saw X attack. Drill run and as well. Run. So I think this is starting to become the most common strat. It's the easiest way to get a two shot out of this, which is to plus two drill run the Arbok, and then you drill run and glitzy glow the Weezing. Unfortunately, we got no, a, uh, uh, headstrong went wow. for plus four. But, and that's why plus four is actually a pretty bad range on this Weezing. Even with like good attack is a pretty not great range. Um, I think you'll see Etiquette maybe do it here. But again, minus special attack is a little iffy. But that Glitzy Glow and the plus two drill run is actually a much more favorable range on that Weezing than plus four drill run is by itself. Yeah. Now, now we're heading um, on to the plus... that combination gives you the best chance to get a two shot in that fight, unless you have insanely good special attack on Eevee. Then you can Glitzy Glow KO the Arbok, but it is very difficult. You typically need to be level 30 or have an insane amount of special attack, which we know obviously these two players don't have. Yeah, now we're heading into the uh, first uh, Archer fight. Uh, for Pikachu, there are a couple of different ways you can do this. The riskiest strat you can do is X special, X special, and then and headbutt the Weezing, and then afterwards, uh, Thunderbolt helping hand. That it can be bad if you're not 28, so that's why uh, Dynam did not go for that strat and said just X special Thunderbolt twice and just KO and just uh, KO'd this. And this fight's pretty simple. How bad is this fight in Eevee? The, uh, the Weezing, this isn't too bad. This is kind of the, uh, you don't use the Rhyhorn anymore to attack. You go back to the old Glitzy Glow strat. So it's unlikely to get an Oko on it unless you have high special attack. Um, but it's typically not dangerous because it is a two-on-one fight. All right, now it's time for a big difference in Giovanni. I'm pretty sure Eevee does this in one controller, but Giovanni, we have to do uh, two controller st strats for for this fight, and the main reason is we have to set up to plus six. So first turn is going to be setting up to plus four because it you know, uh, because the Persian has a fake out. So we just set up. We then Zippy Zap plus six, and then we need the combination of Zippy Zap of Double Kick plus Helping Hand at plus six. We we'll even have a chance to KO Rhyhorn, and believe me, it's a range at minus attack. Believe me, I've. Uh, Done the thing. D done the thing. And I missed the range. It's it's not fun. Man, it'd be great if we just had you know a water move, and uh, just you know use that. But unfortunately, uh, Pikachu does not get that uh, privilege. Yeah, and for for Giovanni, there's there's been a couple ways you've probably seen this fight happen in the tournament. I think you're going to see it the like the most PB-able way, which isn't terribly risky, but it's not perfectly safe. And that's a one controller with Eevee, and you're going to see a an X attack, and one of two things is going to happen. One, we're either going to see Headstrong just go for the Oko with Double Edge, which would save a turn, no. or we're going to see the safer strat, which is using Sizzly Slide to get that burn off. The burn always affects even with crit in play. So even a slash crit, as you saw, was actually perfectly safe from that health because crit does not crit through the burn. It still only does half of its original damage. 
Yeah, that was uh, close. But thankfully, you can just get a pretty nice heal because... Hey, look, Rhyhorn, the thing that we um, had uh, troubles with for Pika. Um, imagine just having a water move. Water move? Could not be me. The one that heals you. Yeah, especially one that heals you. That's like the big, big, a big, big, big deal. Yeah, the uh, Giovanni fight on Eevee is only a little dangerous if you have minus defense and he decides to use Slash turn one instead of Fake Out, dealing a lot more damage before you can get that Sizzly Slide set up. If that's the case, you typically bail out by summoning the, the second controller to heal and Sizzly Slide at the same time. Uh, otherwise, it's typically not too bad. Hmm. Note, note that Dynam did actually uh, pick up the Rocket Hideout Ultra Ball. So now we finally have access to Ultra Balls. However, depending on uh, what you choose to do, you will either have 5, 10, 8, or 13 Ultra Balls, depending on uh, which ones you pick up and which ones you skip. And believe me, don't go for 5. It might, unless you have like everything caught. Yeah, so you will get 5 from fighting the Ace Trainer back in Rock Tunnel. So you do have access to them in the like last part of Rock Tunnel. Uh, there are three easy ones to pick up in uh, Hideout, or not Hideout, uh, Tower. Uh, which you'll see most players go, but there's this extra, um, there'll be these extra five in hideout. A little bit longer to go get them, but five is pretty nice. But yeah, this is a pretty excellent race so far. I know etiquette may have lagged a little bit behind from that rock tunnel, but I mean, Dynam and Headstrong are still very much neck and neck for the lead here. Um, with Headstrong still holding that four poke, uh, advantage in terms of the catch counts. Yeah. Might see uh, Dynam and Headstrong entering like uh, tower at roughly the same time. Note that Headstrong does have a five catch benefit and thus Dynam really, really needs to find some spawns here. Uh, he didn't, I don't, I need to check his tracker, but I don't think he, did he get the Q-Bone yet? Did he has, does he have Q? He does not have Q-Bone, so two spawns for him that he can get that's um very very important uh ghastly and cubone uh two spawns that can spawn here that i think he really needs and speaking of which uh, there's the ghastly yeah ghastly can be one of the more annoying things to catch because it is one of those flyers that likes to move around a whole bunch uh honestly uh, I can't decide whether or not zubat or ghastly is more trolly or if they are just using the same movement ai I think Zubat is more trolly personally, but I think, uh, I guess right now is that that's not the case, but uh, yeah. I think yeah, Dynam did choose to Raz the, uh, the Ghastly, and I would personally just prefer to use Nanab instead, just to avoid that issue. But I think Ghastly is more consistent to actually hit the thing because of, <laughs> it's just static, whereas Zubat has uh, its wings flapping, which is a, uh, bit annoying when trying to catch it. Yeah, it looked like Dynam was actually out of nabs, which is probably why you saw the Raz. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, I've seen runners go back and forth on whether or not they want to use Ultra Balls to catch Ghastly. I know that uh, I go back and forth myself, um, obviously. I also go back and forth. I think I haven't used Ultra Balls in a long time for Ghastly. I just say double gray and hope, and... Uh, I hope that Golbat moves for Headstrong later, otherwise uh, that's going to be an interesting roadblock. Yeah, what, are, what is the odds for just Double Great Excellent on Gasplay? Good question. That's a good no, question. seriously, good question. Well, yeah, let me pull up my notes. Because I I typically go for uh, uh, the Ultra Ball at that, at that point. Like, yeah, Petrong do picking up free Ultra Balls, go back actually being kind of nice and actually moving out the way, which is nice. Dynam would really like to see Tower Cubone, hopefully, but uh, it isn't something that you can uh, guarantee, guarantee it to get. Uh, isn't gonna fight these trainers. These trainers are slightly better in Pikachu, thanks to Zippy Zap having a being a priority move versus uh, Good to Go not being, meaning that uh, you never have to it getting sucker punched and especially for the second one not having chip damage is ideal before getting into the jesse and james fight 
I was today years old when I learned that these haunters have sucker punch, but you know, hashtag Pika Rudders. Hashtag not a Pika problem. But they do have sucker punch. Yeah. So Headstrong going into nice, nice haunter. Uh, Headstrong going into a uh, Jesse and James three. Yes, three. Uh, this one can be is the toughest Jesse and James fight uh, to face because uh, it's the exact same fight as before, except this time we're not using a uh, Raihan plus Nido. We're actually using Eevee or Pika plus a sacrificial lamb, or in this case, sacrificial. Uh, I don't know, just a right horn. I guess. Okay, I guess I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I guess right horn is yeah. yeah. So so right horn is uh, is tanky enough because both ground and rock resist poison. So right horn is four times resistant to poison attacks. Um, it can still die if it gets hit with a dark pulse from the wheezing. Um, but really, the risk here is the EV dying because if you get quad targeted or basically double targeted twice from both the uh, Arbok and Weezing. The Eevee can go down before it gets a chance to get a KO off. Yeah. So um, yeah. it is just it's Looks just like faster to Yeah, it's faster to not get a set to not do a sacrifice strat, because that death animation does add up. Mm. Yeah. Though over on uh Dynam's side, uh I imagine we're gonna see him throwing out uh, yeah. a the tiny official pupper. Um and the good news about that is yes, you do lose the time of the dog dying and you having to replace it uh, probably with the Rhyhorn or the Nitto. Uh, but what it does mean is that the dog will be dead. And you'll be able to evolve it into Arcanine and use it as a ride Pokemon. And you don't have to worry about it gaining XP because you won't have any more free heals until like you take the bed in Pokemon Mansion. And that's assuming you actually uh, do take it as some people do. Exactly. Uh skip it by the way and I even then that, by then uh, it should be deposited anyway i have that uh catch rates uh calculation for you so you said uh double great ball with an excellent throw and a ghastly it is uh 98.5 percent but that is assuming you get the excellent throw on it remember uh, what is great. a little bit more difficult to hit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay Only so look the drill run yeah. Going into like now the final catching segment, Headstrong is in the lead in terms of like the fight having 33 having 33 caught going into uh cycling road. Um Dynam bit far, bit behind in the fights, but only having 30 Pokemon. Etiquette, he is kind of behind, but my guess is that he's actually gonna have 38 Pokemon. Going out of tower, coming out of tower. So, despite the fact he has like, he looks like he's behind. He is way ahead of catches compared to anyone else. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe he just needs like pony plus pony star and then something else. That's it. That is it. That is how incredible Etiquette's catch route is right now. He only needs Ponyta and Staryu, and he yeah. has nothing. Well. Hold on, I think he's remarking right now because at the moment he has 46 planned. I think he's okay, lost. So he might need a. Um, he might so need he'll like. Need, he'll need like Pidgey, um, and like Do Duo is probably the safest bet here. I think Do Duo plus coughing is just enough. Yeah, uh, yeah. But if he's a Pidgey first, he'll just catch Pidgey. Yeah, there's yeah. also room to pick up the Psyduck, which you know is just another single stage evolution. Um, any good pair of of Pokemon that he does not have marked right now is going to get him yeah. there. Dynam has 47 planned, and he, he doesn't have the ten to, he does have the fossils planned, which is uh, an interesting thing to note. He probably he, has to go for the Tentacool. I you think. know what I think is going to happen here? I think he's going to go for a Tentacool, Tentacruel, and Magmar, because yeah. if anybody's going to catch Magmar in this tournament, it is Dynam because but also, he's I think routed... he just needs it because yeah. his patch count is dire. Yeah. yeah, but he routed Magmar into the blue fight because it's guaranteed with, I think, either Fire Punch or Flamethrower, which I think it comes with both. Yeah, it comes yeah. with both, so you can just use either or, 
which is nice. I think Flamethrower is slightly better because we did talk to a person to have all our Pokemon have modest, so it probably is just better just to click Flamethrower over Fire Punch, but again, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it also gets... depends on whether or not you need X items. Ooh, Ooh. that's a shame. The duo was Ooh, there, that but... Was... I think I would have still gone for it, but it was... there. <laughs> The yeah. Flareon trainer was right there. Yeah. I actually have no idea what those trainers' visions are. I don't know if they're good or bad. I know the ones on the bottom of the route are pretty yeah. bad visions, like one, two tile vision. But without the knowledge of it, I can understand yeah. the hesitance. Yeah. Headstrong. At least, at least the Puppy didn't run away this time. <laughs> yeah, Ponyta didn't run away, which is nice. Uh, Headstrong doesn't need, he does need the Pidgey to spawn. If not, she does need to, like, probably catch both the tentacle the tentacle and the magma if the pidgey does not spawn so that is something very that is very important spawn for her to get um here as well but aside from, but she does get the pidgey and she gets like all the normal stuff i think she's fine do note that she cannot go for the fossil as i believe she has sold it compared to the other two runners who have not sold it mm -hmm. that um. does Get the thing does have does now finally get pony, which is uh, a nice thing. And a do duo, which I don't think he has uh, caught yet. No, he has not caught yet. So it does have does find both the pony and the do duo. Headstrong chooses to evolve Ponyta into Rapidash immediately just to get that movement buff, which is respectable, which is understandable and respectable. Yeah, especially on the EV side where your best your best option for movement is still Rhyhorn versus. Pika, where you have Arcanine, which I believe is like somewhere between Rhyhorn and Rapidash in terms of movement speed. Yeah, it's it's yeah. in that top tier. It's closer to Rapidash, not quite. Uh, as we found out, and and funny enough, with the Mount Skip testing, uh, Rapidash is outright the fastest ride Pokemon. It moves twenty six point two pixels per frame. Which probably doesn't sound like much, but considering that Trainer Vision is 25 pixels, that's why the mount skips work as they do. Uh, Aerodactyl is the only other ride Pokemon that is faster than that window. Arcanine and Persian are just slower than that. So it is slightly different, but it's kind of in that top tier of movement speed. Is it a marathon 26.2 miles? Uh, it is. I wonder if that's not actually a coincidence. <laughs> hmm. If I had a guess, it probably is, but I don't, my my uncle does not in fact work for Pokemon, so I actually cannot confirm. So yeah, Dynam, Edstrong evolving some of the, some of the Pokemon, uh, they have caught both the bird and the pony, so all they, uh, Dynam would really like a Psyduck and... Psyduck doesn't really need the Pidgey as he caught the bird earlier. I think the Pidgeot, Pidgeotto that he caught earlier might bite him. Might bite him here, but again, not not because now he doesn't have access to Pidgey Pidgeot and Pig yeah. Pidgeot. Uh, the other hand, really, the, actually, I don't think he can leave. Yeah, he's not allowed to leave until he gets Psyduck. Yeah, I don't like, see. That, I don't see a way around. That's Psyduck a chance, eh? Another bonjour. Come on, come on, Dynam. Yeah. You no, need it. No, but there's a Psyduck. That's okay. Very there is a Psy okay. Psyduck's good. I was gonna say the only other option for Dynam because he's on the Pika version is that he could catch an Eevee and go for the Eevee Flareon uh, Evo combination. That is an option. I have gone for it. Don't do it. Yeah, Eevee yeah, is no. like the other starters has the bad catch rate, so it is by far the most difficult thing to catch on the routes. In yeah. fact, in the AOP routes. Catching Eevee is the moment you switch to double Ultra Balls. Yeah. Headstrong decides to cat doesn't find Pidgey, instead goes for Pidgey Odo, which means that she does need to cat put one thing in the cash room. Oh, do oh yeah, she I see it. She uh, marked uh, Ninetales, so Nine she'll be yeah. getting the Firestone. Yeah, that so. she could Probably actually still just more reliable to go for. Yeah, she could yeah. actually still just catch a Pidgey, though. Like, which is she could. totally viable, because Pidgey does totally spawn viable. on Route 21. Yeah. And I mean, Headstrong still has a few patches of grass. There is still room to see a Pidgey. Uh, Titan weaving through those traders who have god-awful vision. Yeah. So, 
Dynam finishing his route does have everything he needs to catch except Eevee, but you shouldn't go for it. Still needs to catch uh what is it? He still has he still has a Stami plant. He probably has to plant tentacle and has to go for it. There's like I guess Tangler technically, and then you kinda do weird things with that and that kinda doesn't really help the catch count. Ditto. Come on, let's go ditto. Can I'm gonna need to get Randall on the phone after this run because I got vilified in my round one run where I ignored two chances on route 10 and 16 respectively. All three of these runners have ignored a chancy. They have been on all three of their screens and all viable catches. Uh, I and yeah, even for Dino, I was like, you're, you're in dire catcher. I guess, I guess technically Magma has. Unironically, a better catch rate than Chansey, so maybe still, that's yeah, why he's still going for Magmar. Mm -hmm. So, probably going saying, for. I'm just saying, Etiquette saw it on five, Headstrong saw it on nine, and Dynam saw it on 17. So, I'm right. I'm gonna. I know Randall's probably in Vietnam right now, so he might be sleeping, but. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna get him Etiquette on the line. catching his uh, pony, he that. literally only needs to find one of Psyduck, Tentacool, and if he doesn't want to go for either of those. He can also just go for the fossil, as he has not sold that. But now our full attention is not going to be on Dynam's screen because the moment he catches the star, star you, we're going to want to see what is a uh, CP is going to be on that star you. Which, may, by the way, I should probably say it is an arbitrary number that doesn't actually mean anything. But there's the instant spawn. I mean, and it's it not completely is arbitrary. It is, it is a function that just basically, because we've locked down the level, we've locked down uh, the nature. It is literally just a function that measures how good the subtotal of this star, star use IVs are. Um, yeah, and now, two, that's low, I think. Or is that it's, not? Is that fine? It's, it's, it's average. It's on the low side of average. Yeah. Low side of average. Got yeah, because average is exactly 1062. And so, like, it is worth noting that a star you with zeros and everything, but a 31 in special attack and a 31 in, in speed. Oh, there's a vile plume on the screen. Oh my god, please. Is he, uh, so is he going for please it? No, he's going for the other thing. Uh, has he, wait, has, has he, has Diamond not caught a rat yet? No, he has. No, he hasn't. Huh, I actually did not realize that he's never caught a rat, so I guess he doesn't have to go for, um... For yeah, he doesn't thing. need Magmar anymore. Uh, yeah. he's uh, now. Headstrong Magmar. Star is a 1060. 1060. So, again, slightly lower end on average. On CP, at least. Again, we won't find, we won't know until we actually see the stats when it actually matters. Vileplume is so hype, though. Because Vi Vileplume... yeah, Vi I have never seen. I guess that's why some people have Vileplume <laughs> on their catches. Now I understand. Yes. Yep, it is a natural 1% spawn, and Victory Bell is the same for the EV side. Yeah, Headstrong I never knew that. Ultras. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Pop the star with her very last one. Um, Headstrong. The, uh, this should be catch. okay because Headstrong only needs. The only thing she needs is coffee. Go. Um, and it's on the easier side of the catch rate. If you still have double great balls, that's totally acceptable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, before we all got distracted by both Vile Plume and Tegula <laughs> at the same time, I was just going to note that you can still have a really good star at like 1032 CP. So on the one hand, it's a lie. On the other hand, it is a good barometer for how likely your star is to be good. Yeah, if you're above 1100, you are, let's put it this way, you're probably not going to have a bad star, but there's always right. a chance. All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, Headstrong do it does have Silver Rat, so should probably be fine. Oh, uh, yeah, especially if you just use Double Great Boy, yeah, you should probably be fine on catching the coughing. Coughing does move around. Here, the version exclusive Pokemon will be Muck if you do will be Graham and Muck if you're doing Pikachu, which is much, which I think is just a lot easier to catch because it doesn't move around. 
yeah, luckily for Headstrong, the coughing decides to settle down right back in the middle of the screen. Gets the catch. Yeah. Uh, this is not the final catch for Dynam, but does have to go for Tentacle. I guess the other alternative is Tangler and Vileplume, but I think that's a... Uh, <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, gonna veto that one, boss. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen boss things, screen. okay? <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, that's gonna be the final, uh, cat, that's gonna be the final catch for Dyn- for, well, not the final catch for Dynam. Uh, Etiquette, uh, looking at his catch, Jay just needs Star. After he gets Star, he can just go. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, uh, that so, would be one more thing, because right... He does oh, have 48 nice, on uh, his nice play. Nice pentacle, by the way, but that's not what he needs. He needs the small one. And here we're going to see the indication of how good Headstrong Star is. So once uh, it gets added to the party, we'll be able to see in the menu. Uh... Oh, yeah, it's called Tentacle. Never mind. I thought, like, I thought that. I was like, wait, got ten- Tentacle. Star, oh. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's actually pretty good. That is high on the special attack side, and it's going to have... Uh, good enough speed. Yeah, that is so, actually a really strong star. That is, that is a surprisingly strong star for its CP value. Mm-hmm. But let's see if Medikit's gonna go back for that star. I don't think he's gonna go back for it. He should. He should, but he's I not. I don't know why he's He's trying to bank to see if he gets a, a star closer to a uh, thing, and he does. Okay, so. he does. Yeah. Doesn't get wrong. You didn't need that first star anyways, unless this is like 900. And etiquette PP. CP is 1032. It's on the low oh, side. that is... Sh- Should have went back for that other star. <laughs> <laughs> punishing you. That other star would have been like 11- 1100. So yeah, the highest star today is 106. No. It's headstrong star, right? 1060 in terms of CP. So, pretty mediocre to low stars, but headstrong getting the best of best of the world where special attack is actually um, very good. I think mm-hmm. etiquette's star CP average is uh, pretty bad because I just looked it up, and uh, of his three tournament runs, he had a 1032 in round one. 1037 in round two, and then back to 1032 in round three. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe the stat distribution might actually be a good thing. Uh, actually, we should look at Dynam special attack. Uh, I did not see. That is a 111. Yeah, it's low. It's not minimum, but it's low. Um, thankfully, at 111, the Nine Tails is not a range. Uh, that is literally to the stat point perfect. Oh, Headstrong! Um, oh, Headstrong's getting a bad way. Hold on, Headstrong can actually get a bad way. Oh wow, got Headstrong led Do- had Do Duo in its side of the party and got Thunderbolt paralysis on. St- okay, what is this? But at least thing? it hit through, so it was recoverable. Because even with paralysis, still outsped the monk. Let's go. So that was that was not punished like say my run in the last round where I did get Thunderbolt paralyzed, fully paralyzed. Then you're in a bad way. Well, the good news for Headstrong at least is that now that Do Duo is still alive, it now goes into Do Duo, and also Do Duo is now in the second slot, meaning you can actually go for the safer blue fight instead of the. Um, I'm looking at Etiquette Star. The special attack is okay. The speed is not. Uh, mm-hmm. This speed is actually quite slow. Unfortunately, Dynam does not have trouble with this. Well, does not have nearly as much trouble in this fight compared to. <laughs> nice run. Oh, nice. another Chansey! And no, she's not going for this. She doesn't need it. Yeah, at this point, that is just throwing. Yeah. Well, so, that's the fourth Chansey we've seen today. So, looking at the counter, Headstrong is done with uh, catches, but still needs to evolve one, two, three, four things. So, does have that time loss going for it. Dynam going to get his final catch here. And wow, that's, actually only look requires this, to look evolve at this two wheezing. things. Look at this wheezing. This is so rude. 
<laughs> it goes the long way around. Yeah. What's funny is that didn't lose Headstrong any time because she had to wait for the cycle anyways. So remember that Ether pickup from a long, long time ago? The EV alternative is this item, the Max Elixir. Mm -hmm. Pika can get this Max Elixir, but it just tends to not to. It's like much safer to pick it up, but it's not a requirement. Yeah, it, it, it's a backup item if you're feeling desperate, but because you picked up the ether earlier, it's, you know, not required by any stretch of the imagination. Well, that Raticate also made, almost made Dynam hit that uh, spinner, who, by yeah, the way, but... has four Pokemon. Yeah, that's... That, that, no. If that spin... <laughs> there's a, there's a Raticate being rude. Yeah, if that spinner would have looked to the right, uh. the dodging of the Raticate would have actually been uh, pretty punishing. Yeah, Etiquette oh, yeah. through the scientist Ted. The do duo actually dies, like, actually, what it's supposed to do. I say Instead through, of... like, there's not the muck, but, like, the electrode's down. You're basically through. Yeah. And they're now both going into. And uh, now both Headstrong and Dynamo are both going into the gym with actually a fairly close, close race now. Uh, do note that, uh, despite the fact that Dynamo is slightly behind, Dynam only needs to evolve. Ah, uh, wait. Oh, Dynam also needs to pick up a fossil. Oh, yeah, I do remember that now. Yeah, it's so. a, it takes a little. It's a little bit of a detour, but it's not terribly punishing. I was gonna say Dynam only needs like two Evos. He actually needs three. Whereas Headstrong does need to evolve four of its four four of her Pokemon. Uh by the time we get to uh Koga. Oh no, Dynam had an input eaten. Oh, Dynam's gonna have to no, fight an optional in Blaine's gym. Thankful, oh. I have hit optionals in Blaine's gym, don't ask why. But uh <laughs> it's not that bad. I'm just you just Joy-Con moments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, turbo Joy-Con moment, don't worry about it. But uh thankfully none of the trainers are bad. You hit scold, you went you, you hit scold, you get more XP, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I've I've been in this position before, and it it feels really bad because they should be very easy optionals to dodge. Um, funny enough, this is actually the second lane gym trainer we've seen today. Uh, Ergote also uh, failed one of the quizzes earlier on. Yeah, they're not super punishing optionals. Um, it just kind of feels bad because it's like, well, that's just a missed input. Uh, Dynam kind of flexing that the last question is actually any of them are correct. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, my favorite is, uh, who are you going to fight next? A fine mustachioed man. Oh, wait, Mario's in this? <laughs> yeah. By the way, can I just say I really want Blaine's tie? Like, that's a really badass tie. And right. I kind of want to, I want to wear it on TV. I think it would be amazing. Okay, but going on TV in what is secretly full Blaine cosplay? Like, eh? Uh, well, I am a scientist, and that is kind of like a scientist robe, so I bet I could rock the look. I mean, um, would, oh yeah. I would just need a bald cap because I'm thinning in the front, but I'm not like going super Ooh. bald yet, hopefully, you know. Okay. I mean, the, the sunglasses are pretty, pretty pog. The one thing you know, I want to cool. know is the how does shades. Blaine get the fire in his eyes? That's the effect I want to know. I want to know that secret. Uh, the same way Kabu does in Sword and Shield. Oh, you gotta be like... It's it's some fire-type fire, fire type gym leader secret, then. Yeah. Uh, fun thing about this text is... Fun thing about this game is that the game expects you to uh, beat all the gym leaders by this point. Uh, despite the fact that this is actually our third gym leader. Fun. But, uh, yeah... Uh, not the blame fight didn't really go poorly for really anyone, uh, aside from Dynam who had a crit, but that crit didn't really mean too much. You probably can still go into the tent and search with that HP and be fine. Yeah, I think etiquette is going to be outsped by I believe it's the Nine Tails is a blade's fastest Pokemon. Uh, usually you're not if you do the three candy strats. Um, because Starmie gets four candies to the run, and we usually do what's called three plus one. Uh, if you do two plus two, you can, can be outsped. Um, it's the Rapidash that is kind of... Yeah. That you're but, a lot more likely. Yeah, like, I knew it was the Rapidash and the Ninetales that were, like, 
the two you needed to worry about outspeeding. I just could not remember for the life of me which one was faster without looking it up. Yeah, yeah Rapidash um, is the faster yeah. one. Yeah, yeah Rapidash 117, Ninetales 113. I think with the yep. three candies, you can't be outsped by Ninetales. However, at minimum special attack, which is 109, it is a 14 and 16 range, uh, the Ninetales is. Um, yeah. So there's a, there's a worry on both Pokemon, but for the different reasons. Yeah, I just mixed up which one was which. Also, um, oh my god, Headstrong got the trash can puzzle first try. I wonder if everyone else is going to get the first try. <laughs> Should I mark that down on the on the uh, stat sheet? Uh, number number of can tries. First try. <laughs> <laughs> um, though the real Play. question is, how many people go for the middle can and how many people go for the far can? Wait a second. I just noticed something. Dynam did not pick up the fossil, and he has planned Abra and Kadabra in his plan, in his track oh, planner. Oh boy. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> this is gonna be spicy. So, All right, you might can be someone thinking, explain wait. to me this? Because I have no idea why. Yeah, I've lost. So, there is one more opportunity to catch Pokemon, and it is after Erica, because you have to go from. Uh, Celadon to Saffron via Route 7. Route 7 has spawns. You may see a 4% Abra on that route. He's going for that? It, it, there is no other options at this point. Now, I am noticing that Dynam uh, also doesn't have Vulpix marked, so he could also catch Vulpix He's on that running route. Pika. He does no Vulpix. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. I'm looking. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the because the trackers are all combined, mm -hmm. yeah. So he's got he's got to yeah. go for uh, Abra then. Uh, kind of uh, chiming. Wait, in you can do the trash puzzle in reverse. Yep. You, yep. Huh. Never knew that. Yeah, I also learned in the commentary booth for one of these races. <laughs> yeah, this is actually pretty. This is actually a decent idea from Dynam. Uh, he says, no way I win if I go for Fossil. So he was probably thinking, like, it's a, it's about a 20-second detour, and if you're falling that far behind Headstrong, you might not win the race. Uh, and at this stage, only winners move on. There is no wild card advancement. So this is very much the epitome of go big or go home. Mm hmm Oh, Headstrong, do uh, I guess it makes sense to, to do a quick menu here, but... Like deposit some ones you don't need, but yeah, I get. I guess he. I guess. Well, what? I guess we'll be like the backup if you. I guess you're really so putting a lot of your eggs into this well, basket. At, at that point, I think your play is just you call it a day. Um, maybe go for something outside Fuchsia. Maybe fly back to Cinnabar. You're you're going for the high risk play. You're saying if I do not get it here, that's it. But if, but if I go for the uh, if I go for any other play, I'm just as screwed anyway. Yeah, there there are some other emergency backups. They're even slower than the fossil detour. Uh, you are gifted a master ball after Saffron, so you will get a you can go get a free catch on any route for any new Pokemon that you've seen. Uh, there is also an extra uh, Moonstone that isn't too far away. It's in the Copycat House. Uh, so it's just straight to the left from the Saffron Gym. Uh, AOP runners know exactly where it is. You just steal this little girl's Moonstone. Um, but it is a, it is actually a larger detour to get that than it is to get the fossil in the first place. Plus, you would also have to get one of your Moonstone Pokemon out of your inventory. Yeah, and, that's... Uh, and weirdly enough, in this case, Dynam does not have another option. Yeah. Um, Dino yeah. did not catch uh, Nidoran female nor Clefairy, so he actually doesn't even have a Moonstone to use. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is a all-in play that you're really only going to start seeing in this round of the tournament. You know, this is the play that 5% of the time it gives you a chance to win. 95% of the time you're dead in the water, but again, going for any one of those you know 20 second 30 second 40 second detours you're still probably dead in the water we just learned at cardboard clash that would be called playing to your outs 
which is yeah. you got to play to your mm-hmm. highest. You you want to play to your highest percentage play to win, but sometimes five percent is your only play to win. So yeah, got to play to those outs. Yeah. Shout out to Cardboard Clash. Yeah, that is a, that is a, it is an out, but it's like you really have to like hope for this. Hope for this out. He does have a thing where he can despawn and respawn the encounters a couple of times. But he's really hoping for like this four percent chance. Yeah, to at least the, the guard house is pretty quick uh, to respawn because unlike Route Six, Route Seven does populate the spawns pretty easily. Yeah, it is still fascinating to me how like every single zone that spawns Pokemon has them spawning in at different rates. You would think that would have been something that would have been consistent. I will. I will say that even if. Dynam doesn't get it, there's still a merit to finish, as in the tournament bracket. If you do go down to lower, you preferably prefer to go down to lower pot one versus lower pot two. Mm-hmm. And while Headbot did choose to not finish the race as we as we saw it earlier, uh there's still two is if someone else's D, D, DNFs, then that person will also be going into a uh, lower pot two and everyone else who at least finishes goes to lower pot one so there is an argument even if uh dynam doesn't get um the abra here which is really which is like unnecessary right now to um still finish the race so so he may have a chance to still be lower pot one games have a better chance get a pot position so does he get right. abra here we go Ooh, doesn't get it there. yet He's gonna go for the guardhouse. Yep, he's gonna go back All out. Alright, alright. Let's do our second try. And no. Mm-hmm. Going for again. Let's see what these no, oh, now let's, now. let's see what these runners are cooking. No, now Good. he chooses to go, and I think now he's gonna go fossil. He might or he might go for like Vermilion uh, like east of Vermilion. The problem with fo- yeah. the problem with fossil is that you don't have enough. Uh, leftover experience to get it evolved. So if you do evolve the fossil, you're only evolving one. Yeah, he is now going for Venonat Diglett. Okay. Instead. Yeah, is that really on his tracker? That is incredible. Okay. Venonat Diglett. But with it a could... Master Ball, me, I mean, I would Master Ball the Venonat because it jumps around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the problem with, you know, going for all of these backup strats is uh, between finishing Saffron City and go into Koga's gym. There are exactly zero experience points on the table in the standard route. Yeah. So Venonat isn't as bad as what some might think. Um, there was a chance for Venonat on Route 25, but it is a lot more common to see on Route 15. In fact, you could actually just catch Venomoth, which would spawn there as well. Either or would satisfy the requirement. Wait, it's uh, not Diglett? Diglett out of the way, out of the way, but is a very near guaranteed spawn. That as well as uh, Drowsy um, on the adjacent Route 11 uh, are also good possibilities. Can you imagine? Just, 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 um, uh, just, just hang with me for a second here. Can you imagine? if a Scyther would spawn. And then we had our first ever Scyther in an any percent route catch. I'm just saying it's not likely, it's not even probable, but is it possible? I mean, at this point, oh, oh, okay. So, so from reading from chat, I believe it's not, he is catching Venonat. But he's not catching Diglett. He's marking Diglett for something else that's not on his tracker. Oh, or just not in like the general tracker. So yeah, we'll see what he's cooking. It's, later. it's weird because there are 99 Pokemon on this tracker, and we kind of had a brainstorm or like a powwow and say oh, like, the okay, these are like the 99 Pokemon that we could probably get in a run. Uh, like you saw the Vile Plume <laughs> spawned earlier. Like, that was a possibility. But no one really goes to Route 15. Um, so we never really thought to put, like, Venomoth or Tauros or yeah. Scyther. Oh, now, now it's time for the worst fight in the game. By the I, way. Yeah, this, yeah. 
Shoutouts to Bad Archer. Um, let's see what the RNG we get for both okay. Headstrong and Dynam right now. All right, Psychic Muck, bad. let's see what happens. We have a kill list. It's Muck, Electrode, uh, Golbat, Golbat, Weezing, Eradicate. That's the kill list. Nice self-destruct. Nice self-destruct, no protect. That's good. All right, all right. Optimal opener for Dynam. See what uh, Headstrong gets. Like, Dynam needs Headstrong to have, like, a really bad Archer fight to catch up. Yeah, the one mm -hmm. that Dynam has gets the possibility of a three turn, but that's if and only Oh, no, if that's a Thunderbolt. The, uh, yeah, if the Cubone uh, goes for Bone Meringue twice on the Ravkate. Now, on Headstrong's screen, this looks bad, but it actually isn't. With no Protect, you're going to heal on this turn, and for whatever reason, the Cubone is actually favored to use Bone Meringue, so if the Electrode self-destructs, uh, you're going to see... Oh, this might work. Focus energy. The Raticate mm -hmm. go down to a Bone Meringue. Is it going to happen? Yes! So in this case, this is the most optimal four-turn fight. Yes, you took a Thunderbolt turn one, but now you're not getting hit with Sucker Punch for the rest of the fight. All right, let's see. Does yeah. this Cubone get a focus energy? Ah, oh, you headbutt. Okay, yeah. so. So that's this is going to be a... Five-turn fight. He has to heal. Yes, He's a Sucker Punch turn. range. Yeah, Could be fourth Cubo and actually uh, becomes a god. No, five turn. Ooh, not quite. And unless unless we get protected, yeah, so on the right have here, a thing. Uh, a for turn. etiquette, uh, what ha uh, thunder thunderbolt happened? That's also not entirely great, but we're hoping no, to see. No, this is also the same here. start as headstrong. It's thunderbolt no protect. So again, the Cubone should be favored to use Bone Meringue here, and the Electrode should be favored to use Self Destruct, which he does. Uh, so Sucker Punch is also did fail, line. so Cubone is actually not attacking this turn. It could fail if it goes into the Starmie because you. That failed. is also true. Yeah. And does get knock out Eradicate, so yeah, pretty it's much right. the exact same fight. fight as Headstrong. Yeah. Yeah. Really good fights. Those Thunderbolts can be really scary with that paralysis chance, uh, more so than just like the damage. Oh, yeah. Unless you have cracked special defense and you can actually tank two Thunderbolts. Doesn't always happen, but I've seen it. I've seen some things. I believe I believe in the existence of God Stars. I also believe in the existence of really bad archer fights, which we didn't get, thankfully. I also believe things. in the existence of stars that have absolutely no special attack and speed, and all of their CP allocation was in special defense. I believe it. But, you know, luckily, this race was not determined by Archer 2, which, honestly, any race where you could say that is a good one. No, no, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to have a feeling that regardless of what happens, I think both Dynam and Etika, if they want to, like, try and win, they're going to go, like, full-on risk mode to, like, like from Giovanni onwards. Ooh! It is, inter it is interesting yeah. that, that Dynam... Wow, that is... Etika has been getting some weird spin cycles on that, uh, on that guy. Um, but Etika, I mean... He looked like he was out of it. I mean, he, at one point, was considering DNFing and is kind of in shouting distance now of Headstrong for the lead. Yeah. Um, he's just that one fight behind on the same catch route. Like, and there are still plenty of RNG pressure points to come in Koga's gym, uh, Giovanni's gym, all of Victory Road. Like, this is this is not over. This is could, oh, this no, could be it's, quite no, incredible it's, comeback. It's not over. It's not over yeah. until, it's not over until you set up on champ. And don't miss. I mean, even then, it could be over if you accidentally misclick. Like I. Yeah, it, it's not over until the champ Slowbro is dead. Let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> or the Marowak. No, no, no. It's only over when you click. Actually, no, because if you Thunderbolt crit, that actually slows. That actually is slower time. No, actually, it's only. Oh, actually, no. The true reason is it's only <laughs> over until the final fate. It's only over at the final fate of Black. Yeah. True. So we've got. You, you know this. Like, depending on what happens in some of these upcoming fights, because we, you know, 
with the race being this close, it'll be interesting to see which risky strats runners choose to go for for that chance to leap ahead. Uh, do people want to see Giovanni? Do people want to see uh, Elite Four fights? Do people want to see Naomi? Do people... Or no. if they really have to come for it, do, pe do people hydro pump the Agatha? That's going to be an interesting thing to see. Yeah, but uh, both Dynam and Headstrong on the Giovanni fight, this is very straightforward. You feed the Starmie a X special attack and then just press Scald. You know, yeah. incredibly uh, difficult fight. Uh, etiquette on his way after sitting through the evolution. Yeah. So this is anyone's game. Uh... Headstrong is definitely at the forefront. Uh, Etiquette has marked uh, both the Porygon catch and the Lapras, but he has not got them yet, so Ed Headstrong and Etiquette at the same catch. Dynam still needs to figure out exactly what he's catching. I believe it's going to be Venonat and then Rare Ven Venonat and then use a Rare Candy to evolve into Venomoth. Correct. That is what he said. That is his plan. I would like to see. I would like to see if he master balls it, but he might just not. Like that would be the first master ball on stream, on like on any of the races, which would be cool. I think. Or did, or did Pokey I use a master ball? I don't remember when he got kicked by Koga. Uh, I have not gone back to watch that race. There have been so many. Yeah. Yeah, but Headstrong, coming down the elevator, going to pick up the Lapras. And the red candy next to it. Yep. Uh, I don't believe Dynam needs this, but there is a red candy at the 10th floor. But I think he actually has, like, one extra anyway, so I think he doesn't need to pick that, that red candy up. And there... You... Yeah. He had mentioned in the chat that he has the one extra. Yeah. So Let he does not need to go for that, Let but there is... Cook, Jeffs. <laughs> now, Dynam still, oh. like, again, despite the fact that Dynam does have to go for that uh, awkward, uh, have to go catch Venonat Venomoth, it's still anyone's uh, race. It'll be interesting to see, actually, it'll be most interesting to see what strats Headstrong chooses to opt for, because Headstrong is uh, in the lead, so... The question that becomes is, if you have this lead, do you choose to play safe, but have the opportunity, but have a chance that both Dynam and Etiquette could catch up to you? Or do you play risky to try and capitalize on that lead, but have a chance of like risking it all, risking it all at a, poss a possible moment? Yeah, and a certain amount of it's going to come down to what sort of RNG you see, like, if you get some really nasty Koga RNG, do you suddenly start worrying that you're far enough back that you need to go for the risky plays? Huh? Um, uh, are you worried about people making up that time? All right, Headstrong already going for a risk, uh, the non-full heal shop. So saying that the amount of, oh, never mind. <laughs> As yeah, exactly so the right amount. Never mind. I, 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 probably did the, I probably read the menu wrong. No, don't go for the full heal shop. By <clears> 58 <throat> full heals has exactly enough to be at zero, which is nice. Uh, uh, I, I missed it. Did you see if Headstrong bought the X Defender X Special Defense? Uh, uh, Headstrong did X Defend. I saw that for sure. Defense? I don't think so. I Dynam does not buy full heals. So, so the idea there, the thought process there, and it sounds counterintuitive, but if you skip the X defense and X special defense, you're actually committing to safe strats. I know it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but that's just how it works because you're two controllering instead of um, using the X defense uh, for the late game fights. Mm -hmm. um, if you did, you're at least keeping the options open. The idea of the safe strats, though, is if you're committing to them at this point in the run, which is the earliest we can commit to them, 
you can just save time in this shop by eliminating two items that you have to buy, even three if you're also skipping full heals. Uh, if you still yeah. have enough antidotes and the um, the right the weird full heal items as well. I think Etiquette is the only one who has bought an X Defend. So uh, no, Etiquette it's from up an X Defend. Oh. I might be wrong. Uh, actually, you know what? We will find out right here if Indeed. I'm wrong. If I'm actually, uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, I, be I believe, yeah, both Etiquette and uh, Dynam did not buy full heals. Headstrong is the only one who did. Yeah, you don't, and it's, not I, it's not necessary to get the full heals. If you have enough antidotes and the, like, the I cell mean, or jail, you're usually fine. It's just if you get really cringed on by... Uh, hideout poisoning and Koga poisoning, you would kind of eat them. Yeah, Headstrong um, did buy the X Defend. It's usually just safe. But also, uh, I have a question. Uh, I don't know though. I think 97 full heals might not be enough. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Headstrong did buy the uh, X Defend. It actually got Psychic Turn 1, I think. Alright. Oh, uh, maybe not. I actually don't remember. I, I felt so. Actually, what did happen turn 1? I actually don't remember. I don't think it was like, uh, oh, that's the second special defense drop. Speed? That's all I know. No, it, it got lightsaber turn two. Okay, it got lightsaber turn one. I'm, I'm, I'm being dumb. But, yeah, minus two on the special defense, but that's fine. Yeah, with yeah, one at speed, <laughs> Stardy is able to just outspeed and sweep the rest of Sabrina's team. Yeah, you hit Skull, you win, except for the slow bow, we have to hit the Thunderbolt, but aside from that, Mm -hmm. And it's actually very important that Headstroke does click Thunderbolt because uh, she is at minus two special defense. Yep. Alright, I have a question for you guys. Are you slot two Thunderbolt or slot four Thunderbolt? I'm a slot four Thunderbolt. I'm yeah, also a slot four Thunderbolt. I am also a slot four Thunderbolt. I don't it's... know why. I, I think when I was learning the game, the note said to put... Hydro Pump in slot 2, and that's just what I learned, and that's just what I do. Yeah, and honestly, it's correct, because your comfort level is more important than the hyper-optimal, uh, like, menuing speed. It was, like, barely calculated, and it's like, I think having Thunderbolt in slot 2 saves, like, one or two inputs total. And it's like, that's not enough to justify changing your entire, like, muscle memory over it. You're just going to encounter more mistakes. Uh, you also see this in the early game as well. Um, I think, like, Echi and Etiquettes and a bunch of others will also have, uh, like, their... Especially on the Eevee side, like, Fuzzy Buzz and Sizzly Slide will be reversed. Ooh, okay. It might save two inputs through the like the normal strats of the run but it's not even guaranteed that you have normal strats the entire time so yeah uh this is where so one thing to note i will say uh headstrong did use the elixir before koga mm -hmm. so before doing this gym like the t when you use the elixir is a bit of an interesting because the safe play the safe play is going to be uh, do it after Koga, but it's actually more optimal to do it before Koga, and we see Headstrong using it before Koga. So, she does have to be very careful with the amount of psychics used throughout the thing. You do need at least leaving this place for four psychics. Yep, and the problem is that Koga's gym has pr uh, protect spam on every single Pokemon, um, so it can be a bit of a nuisance. There are some minor ways around that, um, especially if you have a good special attacking star. Uh, otherwise, the problem is really Caden, the first and only required gym trainer of this gym, who not only has uh, a toxic protect spamming muck, but also has the move minimize, and that is where um, your psychic usage can get really drained uh, and also be very slow as well. Can I just yeah. get a quick shout out for the Omega early pushy push? Oh, I saw that too. Yeah. Uh, first off, here's the here's the gym. Here's the actual hard fight. Nice. You got protect turn one. Dynam on Route 15, a route I've spent a few too many hours on in a single run, but 
sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I think he's gonna up the lure here. Yeah. Get those that spawn yeah. right up just a little bit more. There it is. And does he master bowl? Probably yeah, not. Sure. I don't use so. time if he master bowls. Oh, he is. is. Never mind. Let's do it. It is a little bit of an animation, but Venonat's a jumpy boy, so might as well. And also, if you're already having to go all this way out of your way to not get kicked by Koga, you know you're behind, so you might as well, <laughs> you know, give the people what they want to see. It's also color coordinated. Yeah, color so, coordinated! You know. Yeah, remember, he's gonna also, uh, rare candy to get Venomoth not on the tracker. That's a, that's a new one for the books here. Gotta put Venomoth on the tracker now. Uh, yeah. I, I honestly think that if, if Aspect okay. is asked to live update it, he's going to actually kill somebody for this <laughs> because uh, he would not be pleased to make that uh, adjustment live. Yeah. Oh, full straight hive, let's go. <laughs> for those who don't know, uh, Venomoth does get used in Starfall Street. Just for you, Crisis. As the, uh... As one of the other mains. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of fun. Let's go, Scarlet by representation. Let's see. Uh, I actually have not been keeping track. How many protects does Headstrong have to, uh, face through? I actually didn't know. Uh, I have no idea. I have not seen We've all been distracted by the existence of Venomoth in you know, a Let's Go Any Percent race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Honestly, it's pretty based. Uh, did... If I saw it correctly, Headstrong went for Scold on Golbat, so I'm not sure how much of a range that was, but, you know. Uh, it's never a range. Scald is perfectly acceptable against Golbat. Yeah, um... It's the other non-Muck Pokémon that are the ranges for Scald, uh, depending on what your stats are. Yeah, you need pretty decent special attack to be able to Scald, uh, Venomoth, which is a little bit easier than the Weezing. Um, but if you can, it's obviously optimal because then you're you're just less tight on that psychic PP because again the uh, using the elixir before the gym is the most optimal way to do it. But it, it gets pretty tight. Um, but it's usually mm -hmm. not an issue e as long as Caden doesn't completely ob obliterate you. Uh, it tends to not be a big issue. Yeah. Now, Headstrong coming down, uh, picking up the gold teeth after Koga. I know this is another one of those hotly contested routing choices within the community. Where do both of you fall on gold teeth before or after Koga? I do early. And I do late. For, I do early for the reason, the same reason why I keep Thunderbolt in slot 4. I don't care if it's only marginally unoptimal. Uh, it's just the way I've always done it, so... Not, not gonna change my ways. I used to do early teeth, but then I decided to do late teeth. I have no idea why I changed to late teeth, but now I just to done improve late. your uh, sum of best, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I say that, but then afterwards, when I did late teeth, I uh, deleted the Giovanni split afterwards, so Giovanni gold afterwards. So it's like, not really. Well, th well then you got to do a run with early teeth now. Yeah, just keep uh, mixing I up and keep best more, more golds. I mean, here's the thing. Sum of best is a lie until you get to until you beat Giovanni two. I think my sum of best no, right Giovanni now is, three. Two, is. I think my sum of best right now is two two forty. Yeah, that sounds about right for you know someone of your uh, particular caliber at this game. Ooh, Dino, careful. Yeah, no, it's fine. He's fine. Don't oh, worry. Uh. I think Etchy's sum of best is like two thirty six. Because he has some really bad golds. <laughs> Which is a good thing in Let's Go, right? Yeah, sure. Well, until until the point where he uh, he actually deleted uh, all of his splits before Blaine. So Blaine was his first split on his live split. I mean, that's actually not a bad idea. I mean, I was it, thinking... It kind of reminds you of like, having the, uh, Koga like the PLA... As, like, <laughs> for my splits having rival one koga koga yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that checks out 
kind of reminds you of like the PLA, PLA uh, catch them all days where you could have a split be like two hours and it's like, yeah, it's just normal. Well, even just like, well, even in PLA any percent, um, Kalkari actually used to not have uh, individual uh, play splits. He just lit his first split was rank six. Well, rank five. <laughs> Yeah, after air, after area four. Yeah, that's a that's a decent way into the game. That's like two. Yeah, that's like well, two thirty at his level. It's not the worst I've seen. I've seen uh, other speedruns that have a uh, their first split being four hours into the game. I, Oof. you know what? We're we're missing the tr the true uh the true final boss here. Uh, Amber doesn't use splits. Uh, she just has a timer running, and then it ends when the game ends. So you, yeah. you could say that her first split is also the last split. I mean, yeah. to be fair, the last split's the only one that matters. The last split yeah. is the only split that matters. And, like, I, I've seen circumstances where I know that when I'm, like, practicing a run or whatever, and I see I'm getting behind on splits, I start making the bad plays to try and save that little bit of time, even though I'm just trying to practice. I don't need to, like, go turbo fast. Um, so I totally understand people just being like, yeah, nah, I'm not gonna look at actual splits, I just want a timer. Alright. After this, Headstrong is gonna go on to the first of many, do I go risky, do I play safe strats? And if, I had that a, if I had a guess, H Headstrong is going to go a bit safer, and Etiquette is going to start going uh, a bit more risky. Yeah, we're uh, about oh, to let's approach. see. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Does she summon the second controller? She does. She does. Okay. Yeah. So, so first is Samuel with the Needle King. Uh, if you one controller, you go for your first Hydro Pump of the run. First uh, of not, many. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, no. That's only if you play the risk. If you play safe, you just uh, gold plus X special. Yeah. You yeah. can also Psychic Stomp at decent special attack. There's a bit of a grid. Yeah. Um, uh, Seeing that, seeing the scold means that the special attack is not that good. Yeah, I usually mm -hmm. like to see like 130 um, to want to go for Psychic Stomp. Because at least the Rapidash does still outspeed, um, but this is fine. Yeah, uh, so that is, is that out of the way. Uh, we'll see what Etiquette goes for here. Let's see, does Etiquette go plus 1p or 2p? Etiquette does choose one piece. One piece. So this is what I thought. So now we're gonna see Etiquette try to go a little bit riskier to just catch up those couple seconds at a time and maybe pull within a range where right. any mistake or any victory road um, shenanigans could swing the race in his favor. Let's Here see. we go. Hydro pump. pump. Does it hit? It does. It does. Yo. By the That's way, Etiquette one of is potentially like more that he needs to go for. By the way, Etiquette has like... not missed a single Hydro Pump this entire tournament. He is 6 for 6 across Etic uh, all T three races. T-Pot, you may have just cursed him. I just, I'm just telling you what the stats say. This is what, again, this is what you say after the, the race, not before. But <laughs> yeah, I guess now... I'm with, I'm with Crisis on this one. Now we have the information. Uh, Headstrong is doing Giovanni 2P. Dis despite having bought the X Defend, does not go for 1P Giovanni. Which uh, makes sense, um, because to set up on this dump trio, you're relying on tanking things through the uh, X Defend that you would set up. And but as it turns out, one in 24 times, that's not really that safe. Yeah, right. you do get hit three times. You usually right. live a critical uh, ball. Attica is going 1P for this fight, so he's trying to save fight, so he will go for X Defend, and Dynam is also going for Hydro Pump, which has said in chat that this Hydro Pump might be a range. So even if he does hit it, it might not kill Vanita. I don't think that's true. I don't think Hydro Pump can be a range on Samuel. Well, let's see. Does he hit the pump? He does. Oh, let's go. So he's saving time. Uh, X defend on the thing. Now he just needs to set up an X special. Hopefully you don't get... What? Oh, he's seeing soccer pine. That's good. Yeah. In the interest of fairness, Dynam is also 6 for 6 on Hydro Pumps this tournament. 
Okay, what's uh, no, okay? I need to go free for free. What is headstrong the uh, hydro pump uh, accuracy? Yeah, let me scroll down here and see what we got. Uh, headstrong this tournament is five for six. Okay, five for okay. So with headstrong now having done the the uh, the 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 fight. She does have to now heal. Depending on Etiquette's HP, he can actually skip that heal menu. So also saving a little bit more time. To which his HP is actually quite high. Yeah, so I think he's he can able, he's able to skip right? this. Actually, hold on. Uh, what is his... Uh, I don't I don't remember when he uh, uses Elixir, so he still might have to use his Elixir if he hasn't used it yet. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. We'll see. As for Dynam, we're really hoping for mainly just no crits. That's essentially now the name of the game now. Just don't get crit, and you're fine. And I, I respect this from Dynam as well. Two controlling, even though behind, um, because you're at least guaranteeing that you're going to win this fight. <clears throat> and what you're basically playing around is you're in third, but the first two competitors are so close that if they trip over each other, like if they both go for risky strats, say on Lance, and then both get crit, then you just clean up the pieces and cruise to a victory. So you're probably saying, okay, I'm a little bit behind, and even if I do risky strats, I probably can't catch up because the other players are doing risky strats. So I'll play safe and hope that their risky strats don't pan out. It's also more of the fact that Dynam doesn't really have much of a choice. He did not, he's the only one who did not buy an X Defend, meaning he has to go for 2P regardless. Mm -hmm. And it looks like uh, Etiquette and Headstrong are just over 30, maybe 35 seconds apart uh, yeah. going into this uh, second to last rival fight. I will we'll do, I will time it from Fate Black, Fate to Black from the rival fight, which will be, which will be okay. then how we tell who's up, uh, how, how many seconds ahead is Headstrong versus um, yeah, Etiquette. I was I was timing the start of the rival fight. With oh, you're timing. Okay, stuff. so you actually yeah. know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it was mind. a little fuzzy because Etiquette got the uh, repel menu. Okay, but yeah, it's, it's still kind of fine. So, Headstrong, so yeah, this fight is pretty simple. The only difference between Pika and Eevee now is the rival is going to have either a Raichu on Eevee or a Jolteon on Pika. The only difference is that with, depending on your Stami, you can outspeed the Raichu depending on if you have good enough speed, which I don't think neither of our runners do. Whereas in Pika, you will never under any circumstances outspeed the Jolteon. Mm -hmm. Like, it's non-negotiable, you will never outspeed it. Yeah, Jol Jolteon kind of a fast boy. Yeah, that 130 base speed does mean something. Uh, it also comes into uh, into play on the champion fight. Uh, you still need to X speed either way, but the Jolteon is now plus four range uh, with Psychic on champion, whereas the Raichu is not. Um, so Eevee version never has to go plus six, whereas Pika version usually does. Again, depend also depends on like your special attack, but a lot of the time you can go plus four. So, or you could just hit, or you could just hit Hydro Pump, as we saw Headbob try right. round two multiple times. All right, <laughs> before we get to the Elite Four, before we get to Victory Road, predict what do we think? How many of these P runners are going to go for one P Naomi? Uh if if I may, um, will not is my prediction. I um, think. Yeah. I think etiquette is because no, he says in chat never do one. In chat, <laughs> never do one. Okay, well, so, I in a discussion he said that if he was losing a race, he would. To which he is, but he might we'll be see. Cl might be close enough to be banking I think, on the uh, I, the, the hypnosis chances, which can yeah, swing I think by. Dynam and Dynam special attack, I think, is not good enough to go for go for it even if it's like a a, probably point. a bad range so don't think it's like it's only worth going for one c naomi 
if your range is like good for hydro pump. If, if you can guarantee yeah. it. Like, what percentage chance would either of you go for a 1C Naomi? It's extremely low for me. Uh, uh, I would only even consider going for it if my Hydro Pump range was 100%. Okay. I think uh, I take is, 15 Which 16. is 134, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think either, I don't think any of our competitors actually have special attack that high. So that much, so yeah, I would probably re amend my statement saying they probably all know that their Hydro Pump Act or uh, range is not guaranteed, so they probably won't go for it. Like, Headstrong I think does get the two, does get the two C hydro pump hit, which is nice. Yeah. And just like that, etiquette is one controller in the fight. <laughs> Wait, is he? Uh, yeah. Uh, there's. Oh my god, he actually he is. is. Holy moly! Uh, the question is whether or not the second player shows up right away, but I no, he's just getting out right. Oh to yeah, it. we were doing it. Oh, defense drop. Oh no. No, okay. he only used Scald! Oh, oh, oh. No. I was gonna say, that that definitely looked like a dropped input. Yeah. Oh. Oh boy, that, that's of not Of all the ways to get punished on this fight, I did not expect that to be the way. Uh, this should be, it this is... should be okay here, because he should be able to summon second controller. Uh, tap it in on this Kangaskhan, and then just plus, like, reset up and another what, special attack. 135 special it's, attack, it's, I think. Yeah, so 135 would have been a guarantee, is a guaranteed Hydro Pump range. But, uh, barring dropped inputs. Yeah. What did you know missing? That could happen, too. Thankfully, I mean, the rest of this fight is fine. Uh, I've learned, actually, that, uh, if Venusaur, if you... If Venusaur comes out, um, it goes for soul, and you don't have plus one. You if you don't have like if you have zero special attack, uh, you don't KO it, but it'll always go for solar beam. So don't know, don't ask why I know that. Didn't know that. Uh, dies yeah. with plus zero psychic. Um, good to know. I'm sure I want to know that, but here we are. Yeah, it does not die at, at uh, zero at zero at uh, plus zero psychic. Just 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 just, just FYI. All right, and Dynan is going for the safe Naomi fight, bringing yeah. out the second controller. Uh, because, you know, on the other hand, you know, if you want to, like, like our runners are obviously fighting for first to stay in the upper bracket. However, yeah. as you both were previously talking about, they're also jockeying for time and position to see if they can get into a good spot in the lower bracket. So, you know, the question is, obviously, headstrong out in front. Uh, if you're Dynamer Etiquette, are you trying to jockey for second, or are you still trying to push all the way forward? I think mm, that's actually a good thing. Like, headstrong is in a very comfortable lead, whereas uh, Dynam is only, like, one fight behind Etiquette. So it's like... I don't, I actually would I actually don't know in, in like in this case. Also Headstrong getting the getting trainer the pass, which is like very quickly. the access skip, which is like nice. Come on, but did he the hydro pump but missed the range. But it's like I don't I it's like, I think The question is, do you think you can catch up? I think and I don't want to like say that it's a. Ba I'm gonna say I like, don't believe in these players, but I don't think the answer is yes. I think if I was in etiquette shoes, I'd play for second. I play for second and just get myself a good upper one, upper round one time. Yeah, well, sorry, lower, get do a lower, get a good time to get into lower, lower, lower bracket pot one. It, it is interesting that um, that that just that one little mistake um, might make the difference now in Victory Road, where it could have easily swung in the other direction. Um, just knowing how the Hypno and the Jinx both have access to sleep-inducing moves, and that can just be a big pain. Yeah. Yeah. But Headstrong being through Caroline starts to feel more comfortable, especially if you are going to engage in all the safe strats in Elite Four. Mm -hmm. right. All right. Hit your last Hydro Pump. Does get it. He got it. Nice. Yeah, pretty good. A little, little second stab at it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tried to get the Caroline skip, mount skip, just for fun. <laughs> I, see, uh, I see you. I see you. 
Etiquette, that's not allowed. We will be condoning you for cheating if you actually do if you actually did it. If you actually did do it. Look, if etiquette's <laughs> it look, I, all I'm going to say is in my heart. Wait, there's a bottle of fresh water there? Huh. You don't say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, where where was fresh water? Oh, uh, there's like a water spout on the wall there that apparently you just bottle up some fresh water. Oh, like by by where Jenny is? Yeah, I didn't no, know you could interact with that. There's one further down. No, above a town, but yes. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. You might be able to talk to that one too, I don't know. You know what? Just do it for science. Okay, that 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 that, that that's uh that's an interesting thing. Like I learned something new about this game. So, very important moment for Dynam. Does he get the skip? He does. Yes. So, three for three, which is really nice. Yeah, you never want to see someone get down and out by accidentally hitting Alexa. Yeah. Um, also, all three people managing to talk to Caroline and not Colby. Shout out to Colby. He's my, he's my favorite mount skip. <laughs> right. And just get put to sleep, which is a bit annoying this fight, but you know, we just heal use an awakening heal. And you can get frozen. And for those who don't know, as long as ooh, Oh my ooh, god. Miss that's into another Missing sleep. Hydro Pump again, put back to sleep again. The troll fight. There we go. There's the Hydro Pump. We got it in the end. He does, I believe, need to heal before doing the Pokemaniac, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You need to be at least plus 100 HP, I think. Or plus 75. I actually don't remember what the math is. Someone can, someone can correct me on that. Yeah, like, it. I, I'm pretty sure it's in that 70-75 range, but obviously depending on what your defense is. Yeah. Uh... uh Oh god, we all missed. Etiquette pumped pumped Golbat. He did? Oh, oh on he the... did. Oh, nice. There's well, just too much to pay attention to. This race is too hype. I high. know, this is pretty hype. Alright. I was actually, I was actually just reviewing going to, his... Going to enter the Elite Four is going to... Is going to do at least one piece... Uh, wait, no, no, mind. Going to do two piece strats. Going to at least have the option to do two piece strats on every fight whether she chooses to go for 2p strat on any of the fights or not is going to be um a tr an interesting thing to see okay uh headstrong gets the fade to black talking to lorelei at 252.30 okay i think headstrong just plays safe and wins yeah like like you you play safe i don't think there is enough time for either of the other two runners to catch up to you. Yeah, no. I think if Headstrong just plays uh, just plays safe, like doesn't go for anything risky and just saves, I think the only way she loses too much time is if uh, she dies to like in one of the Elite Four members and has to restart the game. That's like the only way I see Headstrong uh, losing. Um, Losing this, but if you play safe on every fight, the only fight that's bad would be <laughs> how many get... HP did Dynam just live on? And that looks like exactly the only one that counts. Yeah, just one. Now here's the thing: he Blastoise to heal, does just... have Aqua Jet, so he will. Yeah, have so he to does have here. to heal. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Etiquette does choose to play safe and add a and uh, put Do Dodrio in his party, so it's not. So he does commit to not going to risk. <laughs> the Blastoise just went for Hydro Pump and missed. Oh damn! Nice, nice one. Uh, good, to, good to see the opponent miss a Hydro Pump for once. You okay, Etiquette gets the blackout on Lorelai at two fifty two oh seven, two fifty four oh seven. Apologies. So that is how many uh, minutes behind? Like, yeah, minute and a half, minute and, minute and a half, and a half yeah, almost yeah. minute forty. Uh, so like, yeah, honestly, I 
I think unless someone dies uh, in one of these fights, I think we see our runners uh, finishing it out in the order they are. Yeah. Well, Dynam could just go full risk if he really wants to and try and see how much time he can catch up. But yeah, I, I don't. I don't think the only way. He, the only thing I see is that the only way to the only reason why to do that is a if you want to try and beat etiquette, but b if you want to try and get yourself a high enough time to stay up a pot one because you own because you essentially as long as none of the races none of the people in T Pat's racer concedes. You only have to you you just don't have to be the slowest time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so which is always a tough call because I mean that's that's myself Amber and Triv in Saturday's race. And it's just like, all right, just don't lose to one of those three. And right. even, yeah. <laughs> not exactly the uh the easiest of calls there. Not, not to mention, not to mention, if this race is anything to go by, uh, anything can happen in yours. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm expecting anything to happen. So, if Dynam just wants to try and go for full time save, he just sets up to plus two here, plus four. I mean, no, he's saying plus six. Okay, probably does not have good special attack to go for plus six. Does still have rapid dash in the party, but yeah. Headstrong just beat Bruno. Etiquette about to stop Bruno. And Dynam is starting to sweep through Lorelei's team. Yeah. And, ooh, interesting. So Headstrong goes immediately, just says, I'm 2 peeing this, this fight. Yeah, so the idea with the two, the, the safe strats for Agatha, it all ties together through these final three fights, which are the risky three fights. Mm -hmm. But if you two control this fight, um, you don't have to heal in between any of the remaining fights, so you're saving those menus outright. Uh, and huh. in this case, so you just you're just gonna set up and sweep as you're attacking Agatha, healing near the end, and ethering at the very end. The only cost really is that you have to not select psychic on one extra move because you are using one of those refreshed psychics on the last game. Mm -hmm. So that's why you don't have to heal going into this fight. You're going to heal mid fight. And then you don't have to heal for Lance and you heal once again mid fight. So then you don't have to heal or menu going to the champion as well. It's all that time save from not picking up the, if, if they would have done it in this run, if they would have not picked up the defend or special defend in the shop not picking up the full restore in Victory Road, and not menuing three extra times in the Elite Four, it comes out not that much slower. I think we timed Amazing. it out. It's only like maybe 10 seconds slower total to do the completely safe strats through the Elite Four. Oh, I mean... Wow. It's, it's a little stupid that it works that well, but it is crazy good how good these safe strats are. Mm. I mean, or, you know, you can just be me and just uh, don't pick up the forward store and just get power of love anyway. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does it work out in the end? Like, honestly, it'll, it'll be... And correct me if I'm wrong, but at least some of these safe strats for the Elite Four are very recent developments no. Yeah, they well, were basically also developed... goes for safe stress. That's interesting. I wonder if Dynam's going to go for safe strats also. Yeah, or these safe strats actually... were de were developed for this tournament. Oh, there's one other thing about the Agatha fight is you can just set up an extra X special attack and then avoid turnarounds for the Gengars and usually the Golbat as well. So you can actually save six seconds back for no turnarounds. Hmm. That, that's, that's why all those strats just all you're banking time in ways that you couldn't in other um in just like the normal strats mm. well now i've learned the actual 2p strat because i knew there was a 2p strat in agatha it turns out i was doing it wrong but it's fine that's yeah it's gonna be wild to see like you know runners on my caliber uh like consistently Afro. going for these strats in you know like tv attempts just because you know 
if it's only 10 seconds, that's not that big of a difference in the grand scheme of things. In, in, in order well, to, to finish, like, stress, guarantee that you finish a run is quite excellent. The way it yeah. works for Agatha specifically is that you need to make sure that your second turn you can set up that X speed before the Gengars come out. So that's why the, uh, the infamous line, you need a bird or a fish. You need a flying type or a water type to fade out the wheezing guaranteed turn two to get that X speed set off. Here we're gonna see one of Dynam's like signature strats, which is not Dodrio, but the Lapras. And I'm not completely sure how the Lapras fits into the grand scheme of things, but it does satisfy that requirement of a bird or a fish, being that Lapras or Bengus or Larpus is a fish. Yeah, uh, to quote Etiquette in the chat, you need a bird, you know, like your Dodrio, or a fish, you know, like Golduck. A classic line, I forget uh, to whom it's attributed. I don't think I've ever done this fight. I've, no, I've done this fight 2 it's just that my 2 strat's a little weirder. Mm -hmm. Where, but I I do like the first two turns as the one piece strat. But if I don't get power of love, I then summon the second controller and then just uh, sweep from and then uh, heal the paralysis and sweep from there. Because despite the fact that you are paralyzed and speed doesn't affect until the turn afterwards, uh, you still have enough speed to outspeed wheezing at plus two paralysis. So you just heal the paralysis. So you don't get paralyzed. Yeah, it work it works out, but like committing to the safe strats as early as possible does net you the most time using the safe strats. Otherwise you kind of feel otherwise you end up in that weird middle where if if you're only going partially safe, you're not getting the full benefits of the fastest possible safe strats. Um so it doesn't feel quite as fast, but committing to it like from the get-go makes it so that you're just losing as little time as possible. But there are mm -hmm. options like that. Like, I've been one controllering uh, Agatha, just being like, well, if I get Power of Love, it's outright faster. Uh, and then I can summon 2C for Lance and then eat the time loss, basically, on the Lance fight, which is where where you do lose the most time. All right. Now, the most important thing for Headstrong, does the Pidgeot... Pidge yeah, the Pidgeot target the right thing. Yeah, you actually want Dodrio to be KO'd at, like, the Giovanni fight, so that way you can have, quote, faster one-controller turns. It's not guaranteed, but it is more likely than if Rapidash is your partner. Yep, uh, that but still not the wrong thing. thing. Ugh. Um, you just, you, it's just slow, you lose about 20 to 25 seconds in this manner. Um, Probably doesn't mean you too much, do. but yeah, I cussed it. Yeah, nothing you can do about it there. Yeah, that, I guess that's why people do bug strats if they're doing like 2P strats for this fight. I still just still full send and just uh, use rapid use rapid dash still because I'm lazy and don't want to box. I don't like yeah. want to like, box menu. It's just like I, eh, I if it works, a, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I did a friendly race with etiquette yesterday, and I did risky strats through Lance. Had a 32 second lead re-withdrew a Butterfree just to do a safe champion to tap in a win. Uh, almost costed me the race. I lost 24 seconds. Uh, it was actually, it was, it was closer to 26 seconds. And it did die. I did get the quick attack KO. And Etiquette came roaring back, and I, I ended up only winning that um, match by 6 seconds. So it just shows you that you, you just kind of fall in that weird in the middle if you don't commit to the safe strats as early as possible um and you're just like oh i'm just gonna do the safe strats now it's like yeah that's gonna cost you 25 seconds would have only costed you 10 right. if you did it right away page mm -hmm. you did the thing let's go yeah i ko'd from full as well no i came from half it was already damaged no oh, because of the because of the revive which is also yeah. real uh, a really nice way to like set it up if you you know have your bird at half health. Yeah, 
the 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 Pidgeot absolutely has kill AI, unlike mm -hmm. Koga for some reason. But um, yeah, so at least guarantee. Then that's why bug strats are relevant. Is you always get quick attack from that. Yeah. yeah. But Headstrong finally finishes champion. GGs. After mashing a couple of seconds through, she will be our race champ, our winner for this race, and will be advancing to meet. Is it is it Eshi? It is Eshi as yes. our second semi finalist. Yep. Yeah. We and while can... we wrap up, while Headstrong finishes things up, we'll hopefully we'll have all three runners in here shortly after. I just want to shout out all three of these runners for like. Well, Dynam's gonna get a what 308 after you know having to go catch a venom off. These runners are so good. Yeah, and... that's so good. My PB's only a 309. It's like they're getting a 308 right? and they're making and it's like they have shush sure, these really dumb mistakes, but like Well, not not yeah. even the dumb mistakes, the the really rough RNG, uh, which includes, you know, Joy-Con inputs getting eaten. And they're still putting these incredible times down. All all three of these runners are better at Let's Go than I've ever been at anything in my life. Let's yeah. just be real. <laughs> it, it, it is really just showcasing the obsessiveness and the quality and that attention to detail that all of these runners have put into this game. It all matters. And for everybody that is hoping to get to that level, like all the little things add up from you know doing faster catches to faster menuing to faster decision making when all of that really starts to roll you see the quality of the run that you got in this race and i'm sure that everyone's gonna come in here and be like uh yeah that was like kind of a meh whatever not very good run or well, maybe just say this is kind like of a run of all time but there's still obviously these are quite competitive times and that means yeah. at the top end when the rng does go their way then we start seeing some absolutely insanely fast times. so again congratulations to headstrong our champion for today our second semi-finalist moving on to the round four upper bracket matchup against etchy and headstrong is here right now and i want to ask you this first of all ggs Thank and you. I want to put it in a competitive way because this was a rematch against Etiquette where he defeated you in the last round, but you got him back in this round. Does does that actually matter at all or does it kind of playfully matter? Because obviously everybody is like incredible friends. Um, but does that rivalry feel a little good? It was just playful. It was just, it was just silly that we ended up have, having a rematch in the first place back to back. <laughs> So how was your run overall? I was just kind of saying that you're probably going to come in here and be like, ah, 305, that was okay. But um, were there any like good points to the run that you can hang your hat on? Uh, were there any bad points that you're like, man, I wish that RNG went a little bit better? Uh, any quick recaps on that? Honestly, when I finished Lance, I was confused because I thought I was on like 303 pace. <laughs> um, so it's a slower than I actually thought it was, but it's okay fine um the only things i could think of that were slow was my forest was terrible until the bell sprout and then both of my jesse and james fights kind of sucked um what else i guess oh. I, I the highlight of things i got to pump the hypno and i hit the range <laughs> oh you did i missed that <laughs> Yeah, I pumped the hypno. It was the only risky pump I went for. Because it's not that risky of a pump. But I didn't miss a single pump. So, because I, I hit... I hit the, um... I hit that pump, the Kanga pump, and the Caroline pump. GG's headstrong, GG's Etta. GG's. Yeah, I was going to say, speaking, yeah. speaking of weird hydro pumps, Etiquette <laughs> hydro pump a Golbat on Caroline. Okay. So, <laughs> you, obviously, your victory road was a thing and it started with the dropped input how did that feel in the moment oh. and then the second question is going even farther back you obviously paused when the kangaskhan was on screen yeah. and i think you very seriously said that you were considering dnf so of those two like really 
bad moments of the run, what kept you going to at least finish with a strong second place time? So, oh my God, the, that whole run <laughs> is all I'm going to say. So the run started off like slow, but manageable. Like, I think I was behind the whole time. Um, I left, let me see my splits because I still have them up. Uh, my Cerulean was like a 48 with 16, which is like almost a minute and a half behind where I like to be. And so I'm like, all right, this kind of sucks. And then I mess up Vermilion Skip on the way back. Yeah. And, and I'm like, that. this on the way back never happens. So I'm like already a mess. I get to route 10, one thing spawns. I actually ended up with a decent route 10 after I went back up after the fight. But I'm like, this sucks. Rock Tunnel was perfect. Rock Tunnel was fantastic up until I was at like the Kangaskhan trainer with no Rhyhorn and then just no Rhyhorn the entire time. I get to the, the final floor and Kangaskhan spawns as my lore comes up and I legitimately am like, am I just going to DNF right now? Because this is so in, like tilting. Um, to get a 1% spawn. To get a 1% need... spawn. And that's the third time in the last three weeks that's happened to me. Getting a Kangaskhan before a Rhyhorn in that final room. Like literally the exact wow. same situation. So I'm like, fine, I'm going to continue, but only if I get a Rhyhorn. And so I do the final fight and I just start running around in circles looking yep. for Rhyhorn. Nothing okay, spawns. I am just running around aimlessly typing with my other hand, like I'm going to <laughs> DNF. And I ran into a Rhyhorn by accident. So I'm like, okay, I'll continue. Everything else was mostly fine. My catch, my catch count was super, super, super high. Um, and then, yeah, in Victory Road, I, I went for the pump on Samuel, got it there. I looked at my special and it was 135. I'm like, 134 is guaranteed. This is perfect. I'm going to play it up in chat like I'm never going to do 1C Naomi. <laughs> and then I'm just going to do it. And I go in, do the 1C Naomi, get crunch defense drop. I'm like, there's no way I get sucker punch. There's no way I get sucker punch. And then I just don't hit Hydro Pump. I hit Scald. I, I flicked my stick up. It just didn't take or I mashed too fast or something and um, died there. Um, and then the rest of Victory Road, I was like, all right, now I'm just playing for second. Um, I was kind of playing for second anyways. It was mostly like, I think if I had hit the pump and. And like, didn't get put to, didn't get put to sleep yeah, like a bunch it, of times. I, like, I think the, the way I win this race is I hit that pump. I don't get put to sleep, sleep on um, Caroline. Headstrong does like lose one turn on like either Caroline or Nelson. And Headstrong gets the the like the slow champion with the two controller. I did like, get that. <laughs> yeah, I think we, with all of that, I think I have like a chance, a chance of winning. Probably still like 15 seconds behind. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I, which one's yeah. Nelson? That's a hypno, right? Uh, Nelson, so Nelson is the hypno, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I pumped hypno. I should have gone. I completely forgot that was a strategy. Um, to be quite honest, and I should have gone for it. I, based on the damage I did with my thunderbolt, I probably would have missed the range because I like what did less than half somehow. I was one thirty-five. Well, that's not. Yeah, that's not good enough to do pump. I should have gone for it. It's at it's at least a range. It's a bad range though. Yeah, it's oh. a, a hundred and hundred and forty is a fifty percent range. My was yeah. ten sixteen uh, when I went for it. So I want to also get Dynam in here because yes. there were yeah. some memes on his screen <laughs> as well. Obviously, the most notable was your catch route was it was low. awful. It was bad. You were everything was leaving fine. Tunnel. Everything was fine entering Rock Tunnel. Everything was not fine exiting Rock Tunnel. I'll so, just say that much. Did you ever in your wildest dreams ever have to think, I need a Master Ball of Venonat and Rare Candy it to get Venomoth in a race no. just to get a 308? Let me preface this by saying that before any of the tournament races began, I decided to do like a what if the worst case scenario happened where I am low XP, low catches, what do I do? And then like just come up with a few things to try and figure that out. Uh, this was that worst case scenario. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, 
I decided to knock over the fossil because Headstrong was too far ahead, and if I'm not first, then obviously I drop to lower bracket. Um, I can't spend the time like doing 20 seconds for a fossil, so I had to gamble on the Abra. Abra gamble didn't pay off, so it's like, all right, the backup is Venonat now. Mm. But yeah. uh, early teeth, Omega early teeth is actually optimal <laughs> because you drop it off before you <laughs> go into Koga's gym. Yeah. So uh, I'm That's glad cool. at least if uh, if I didn't place high, I was able to to show a couple of things off. Oh, I did get a perfect archer fight. That was kind of neat. Yeah, Three everyone had nice. everyone had great archers. Uh, yeah, everyone thought it was four turns. Both had the. Uh... I got mine was three turn. Oh wow! I got three oh. turn with boom because I got I got thunder shock. No, no protect. I healed and then the boom kill. Uh, the boom brought the eradicate to half health and the Q bone killed it. So I, I guess think that's still. Turn. I think Is that's still four, four, turn. four turn. Yeah, that's four. Yeah, sorry. It's the four turn, but it's like the. But fast no eradicate four attack. Turn. It. Super fast. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the same one, one I had. had. Um, and then the scientist spinner spun up on me. You went up? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that too, and you juked around real fast. Because it's happened to me before. Uh, and so I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna keep an eye on him. And then he started to spin up. I'm like, oh, <laughs> go around the bottom. <laughs> um, I did I did want to ask Headstrong, how, how was your minus special attack, Eevee? Because mine was great. <laughs> mine? Yeah, I pretty much ignored the special. I, I had such high attack that I just did what I could with that instead. Like, I was sizzly mm -hmm. sliding the haunters. Yeah, I did. The only turn of anything I lost was I... Let me look at that, actually. I wanted to do uh, Archer 1. I wanted to go X special, X special, then plus 4 KO the Weezing, so that way I could plus 4 and rock throw the Golbat. Um, and the... Weezing lived at plus four, which I think is wild, uh, because it can die at plus two. Apparently. How can it be a range for the worst <laughs> EVs at plus four, and also a range at plus two for the best EVs? I don't understand this stupid game. Apparently my EV did not have an attack characteristic like I thought. It has alert to sounds, but I finished with 82 attack. Jesus. That is Whoa. huge. Y you know, all the... <laughs> All the attack AVs actually went to Etchy's Pikachu in the earlier race, if you saw that. Because he yeah, had a modest EV, that, or a modest Pika, and it was just collecting attack <laughs> AVs. Yeah, I kept seeing myself get attack AVs. I was like, I don't know what I can do with this exactly, because, Ooh. like, I had so much attack that I knew I could probably just get around the minus special attack with mm -hmm. it, but I didn't know <laughs> so, other than on the Haunters. Yeah, I, I was I was pretty lucky with mine. I did standard, like I did non Rhyhorn Jesse and James fights and didn't lose any turns, which was nice. I did Rhyhorn Jesse and James, and my Rhyhorn did not. It one shot the Arbok, but it did not one shot the mm -hmm. Weezing. Yeah, I I thought because the Rhyhorn was literally the last thing I caught in Rock Tunnel. I didn't think it was going to be level twenty five, but I had I had forgotten I caught an Abra before. So, uh, Celadon. So it actually would have been 25. Mine or it was 27. 25, <laughs> Jeez! And you still missed the range. Oh my god. Okay, let me find the thing. Yeah, my XP also was just not great at all. Like, no Raticate, uh, just low XP overall. Ah, yeah. I missed the range on the, uh, the plus two helping hand Rhyhorn in tunnel because I was still 24 and wasn't level 25 yet at oh, that no. time. Among was various decent. other things. My Rhyhorn's minus attack. Yeah. We all saw a Chansey. This Neither of a, none you, of us you, caught you, it. You all saw a Chansey and no one caught it. If I, I had remember such correctly. a weird Chansey spot. <laughs> it was on I, Route 9. Yeah. yeah you had this round was nine. on Route 5. I had Route Diamonds 5. was out <laughs> Route 17. Beautiful. I, I did catch a mansion. Stable, oh, and there was a one in Mansion, too. Yeah, my, I, had, I had Route 9 and Mansion. So, someone get uh, someone get Randall on the line. Tell him that you saw four chances, none of them caught. <laughs> right. I, yeah, I do want to ask all, all of you. Of <laughs> Sorry, I just want to say I do want to ask all of you a couple of questions. Mainly about not about these runs exactly, but 
about the future. So with Head Headstrong, you won, which means you're going to be facing Echi in the next round, but you're also yeah, going to be facing whoever wins uh, the next upper round race between T-Pad, Amber, and uh, Triv. Mm -hmm. And the question I want to ask you is, who do you not want to face? Echi. <laughs> I agree. But of the other race, I don't know Triv's play very well, but Amber and T Pad will scare me. So right. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to face Rhyhorn. <laughs> That's my answer. You want to face my Rhyhorn? I don't want to face me either. Have you Have you seen the mistakes that guy makes? I don't want to have to face Venomoth ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And as for both Dynam and Etiquette, now you're in your lower bracket. How much uh, like now more nervous on the next race are you thinking you're going to be? And out of the remaining races, who do you like not want to face in the next round, if possible? Uh, well, considering my time, I don't want to face anybody, <laughs> um, <laughs> to be quite honest. But no, uh, I... My original goal going to this tournament was just to make it past round two, and I've more than achieved that now. So I'm honestly just happy with whatever happens now. So I'm just going to play my game, and whatever happens from here on out happens, honestly. Yeah, for me, I think, I think I'm going to be less nervous. Even though there's more on the line, I think I'll be less nervous um, just because there's more, like, I don't know. I, I just It feels like there's less pressure. I don't know why. Um, it's the but, edgy dodge factor. <laughs> yeah, but but realistically, uh, a, a lot. Obviously, uh, whoever gets second tomorrow, um, Head Bob, who DNF today, is scary. Ergote is scary. Um, a lot of the people from the lower bracket, like just looking at these names, wave dropping to the lower bracket is terrifying. And to come in and possibly like a pot three, so like. That could be a, a big upset, Sandy aspect. Uh, really, like this entire list. The fact that the like the yeah the the fact that the cutoff for uh, the second places last round was a three fourteen, and that's with people who are still improving at the game, like Poke Guy. Um, I think is just absurd. I think it was crazy that the last advancing time was faster than everyone in the lower pots like round one time mm -hmm. so everyone improved in the lower bracket from round one to round two in order to advance and if they keep that trend yeah the, i agree there's a lot of scary names on that list yep any last minute comments from everyone as we start wrapping it up for the evening yeah, sorry, for everyone's strat. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for the pickums yeah no kidding i, I saw a headstrong pick em. there was one one person picked me to win well then they're win they're winning pick was right it now. it was tucker wasn't it yeah i think so yeah, yeah. shout out to tucker well, every, that one everyone right. except tucker and shambles <laughs> all right well how about we take a look at the uh upcoming schedule uh, there is actually another race happening right now. Uh, it is Sandy Beach versus Quell versus Razor Edge How's 7. That race going? Yeah, uh, they are over on PSR TV too. So we're going to send you that way in just a moment. They should be about halfway through. Um, then for tomorrow, there is just one race for the Friday. It's Psy J and Furious. Uh, that was actually supposed to be with Leggy. Uh, so what we want to shout. Pack. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we wanted to, to, to shout out you and and to say thanks, uh, even though you uh, couldn't make it for this round three race, even making round three is an accomplishment in itself. So we, of course, wish oh, you the best of luck uh, at RPG Limit Break. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get to hear you on commentary more often as well. I'm sure that's going to be a uh, pretty sound deal, right? Oh, yeah. You haven't seen the last of me. Good, and good, even if I'm not in the booth, I will definitely be around to help out with tech. That is great to hear. But yeah, packing, uh, kind of important, uh, turns out. Uh, and then on Saturday, we have a triple header of races. So get your Let's Go cap on, because you're going to be watching these channels like all day long. The first of those races is Joker Sleeps 
versus Jay Tattles versus Polka Guy that's going to start over on PSR TV 2. If you're wondering why this says 11.58 a.m. Eastern, uh, that is because there is also a simultaneous race that is occurring at 12 noon Eastern. That's going to be the Amber, Triv, and myself uh, on PSR TV 1. And then after that at 6 o'clock, it's Wave Aspect and Crisis. So again, triple header coming up on Saturday uh, with one race tomorrow and one race that we're going to send you to uh, pretty shortly here. Yeah, yeah I'm they, not prepared uh... for my race at all. I'm just saying. But, like, I'm just saying this right now. There's no way I win my race unless something absolutely uh, horrible happens to the to my other two opponent to my other two opponents. Yeah, that's another name aspect in the lower bracket I mean, that can be a very I mean, scary opponent. I mean, I would love to watch that race. Sadly, I have to be part of it. <laughs> I, um, I mean, you could you could pull an etiquette and just type in chat the whole time. I didn't type in chat until like the very like halfway through the race. You but... were all laser focused <laughs> the first fifty minutes of that run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I was gonna say they they scheduled the race at eleven fifty eight to 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 snag the PSR TV one slot, and then Jordan boomed them and put them on PSR TV two instead. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Good one. Uh, uh, all these races are going to be fantastic. Like I, we're we're at yeah. the point where everyone in a race is like this race here. Last round, we all had times within thirty one seconds of each other. So like all of these races are super close races. Um, you're not going to see blowouts anymore. Um, it is definitely something you want to keep an eye on. I mean, Agreed. just as evident, our pot three one runner won today's race. Yep. Heck yeah. It's all what about up the reverse draft. pot order. <laughs> <laughs> something, something, something. But anyway, um, I think we should probably send these good folks on over to the ongoing race right now so they can catch that. They're all yeah. about to get Stormies, so yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're all on Cycling Road or, or Pokemon Road or whatever you like to call or whatever we like to call it in this game. I don't know, uh, but uh, yeah, they're they're about to be a cat. They're all catching like their ponies and their um, birds, and actually, one is going to be catching their star very, very soon. So we'll be seeing the the final third of the game happening. So uh, until uh, until until tomorrow, we'll. Until tomorrow on this channel, we'll see you then. Bye.